record. Okay, here we go. It's time and it begins. I'm not even on the right tab. Here it is in three, two, one. Welcome to another rousing introduction to the show called Core. This is Core for March 28th, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson with Bo Schwartz and John Jagger. We're here to talk about games, the video variety. All right. You get your tabletop fix somewhere else. Be coming here talking about Monopoly we, bullshit. All right. Sometimes we do. Yeah, we do. That's true. And we have fans in the audience. I see Dr. Tolbert in the chat and he's a, he's a big time tabletop guy. Uh, in fact, bought my card game that I made which was very nice of him, uh, and gave a good review. So, uh, yeah, never mind. We're changing our entire format to support TRPGs, uh, 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 you know, board games, roll the dice, whatever you got to do. We're here for you. All right? Uh, what we are here for you is uh, for this. Uh, the, this is core, where the term one more term or one more turn means uh, applies to everything but the opening of a safe. And the reason I make that terrible joke is because John's responsible for me installing Civ Six again from his talk last week. So well done. Heck yeah! Uh, I'd forgotten that I'd somebody had gifted me a code forever ago that gave me all the extra stuff. I had the base game for since launch day, but somebody sent me a code that brought you to the complete edition or whatever and they had all the expansions and stuff and so i was got all excited i'm like oh yeah i forgot about that and john got me in the mood and i'm kind of want to play one and i installed it all and then i started a game and turned off all the uh catastrophe stuff and most of the religious stuff i think i played just like a vanilla version of the game because i don't actually yeah. like those aspects of these things i don't want random storms or global warming or a ocean gets too high, or a floodplain. I don't want that shit in my life. I, I don't play those things in in city builders. I turn all that stuff off. So yeah, you're not wrong. Like some of that stuff isn't great. I thought the the like the natural disasters and stuff. I can kind of do that. Like sometimes it's interesting, but like it's really more just annoying than anything. Like they tried to balance it by giving you perks, like. Oh, you know, it's a floodplain, so you're going to get a lot of resources from it unless it floods, and then it's going to be a problem. Yeah. But it's still kind of more of a hassle. I really like the religion one in theory. Yeah. But then it just makes turns take <clears throat> so much longer as you just watch, like, because I don't really get into that aspect, and then all of a sudden someone's going for a religious victory, and they're just constantly sending little priests into my town to go, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh lo, lo. The, yeah, oh, lo, lo. yeah, where's that video, Scott? Uh, oh, lo, lo. I know, and I promised they it. Convert my town, and it's like, great, that took another five minutes. But yeah, I, it's not, it's yeah. just, I gotta be in the mood. Oh, lo, lo. Yeah, those, there's the guy, <laughs> oh, lo, lo. but I, but I really do love that game, and I do like that when you start it up, it says, Do you want the catastrophe stuff? Yes or no? And I can say no for this, for this specific game I'm starting. And then I'll say no. And it'll say, do you want the religion stuff? No. Okay, off you go. And then I was randomly um, Egypt, which worked out because now the Nile doesn't have flood problems. So Yeah, played, nice. Yeah, played a whole game. Well, Oh, I'll, did you play on accurate landscape? I did. Uh, well, I don't know when I start. Oh, I did just like, because you can start just a game without doing a lot of setup if you don't want. And yeah. uh, so I just did that quick start and it randomly gives you a leader and in this case it gave me literally the nile was in there wow called the nile on the on the thing so I, I i assume so like if you play it that way they give you some historically accurate stuff but obviously it's silly because teddy roosevelt is somehow <laughs> in the dark ages you know learning how to make a wheel like it does, none of that shit makes sense but um Anyway, it's still great. Just a great thing. I don't know how you ever top that. The, the rumor is they're working on a new Civ game. I don't know. What do you even do in a Civ 7 that's better? Or, I don't, what do you do? Like, haven't they kind of done everything in that game? I don't know. I, I don't know, but I will play it. That's yeah, what I know. I'll play it. Of course I mean, I'll like, play you it. Ever, do you ever run out and get bored just like as an entire company? Just like <laughs> Right? That's it. We're just sick of it. 
Well, I guess that's why you end up with uh, Midnight Suns, maybe. Yeah, they were probably yeah. stoked. They're like, oh, this is so different, and XCOM, and all these things. We get to make these different things, and then no one no one buys Midnight Suns. They're like, shit, we got to make Civ 7, don't we? Makes me so sad. Midnight Suns was so good. I know. Not what if we were getting it. a Midnight Suns 2 instead of jank-ass Marvel Overwatch? Yeah, I'm a little worried about that. There was some <clears throat> post by a dude talking about Marvel Rivals? No, Marvel... What is it? What's it called? Marvel. Marvel. Free Marvel. Play. It's rivals. Marvel. It rivals. Rivals. Marvel. Day late and a dollar short. They, <laughs> somebody says they were working for NetEase back before the pandemic on this game. Oh. And said oh, that you got a lot of insider info. He eh? said he got he got under. Well, it was just some Twitter, some developer on Twitter. But he said, oh, he didn't get paid for like the last third of his work or something. It was a huge ugly mess. Andy said when they were making that game, that thing was jank with no direction. So I'm not saying that that's true four years later, but boy, that guy was sour. He wasn't happy about yeah. what was going on there. Well, I mean, it makes sense, right? That's Nettie's. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the, the worst part about that trailer is the first two seconds when it says Nettie's on it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like yep, <laughs> this, this is going to be like, it might be really uh, slick looking. But uh, that is like a scarlet letter, if I've ever seen one. Yeah, and the minute I saw Iron Man <clears throat> doing rain, rain down, whatever, from it's basically Farrah from Overwatch doing her thing, I just went, oh, they really are just making an Overwatch ripoff. And then I saw the Hulk jump in, and it's like Winston. This, it just like immediately reminds me of what Winston does. I think that's what they're doing, like almost like character for character. They're just straight up like lifting. Well, if there's one game that <clears throat> nobody can get enough of and certainly has such a large audience that it's ready to be mined, it's Overwatch, let me tell you. The timing seems weird. I'll agree. <laughs> Let's talk about striking while that iron's hot. Yeah. Man. I mean, that game came I mean, out in 2016. We're kind of long tooth. Well, Iron or for Overwatch <laughs> 1 did, but yeah. <laughs> The jokes on the jokes on Netties, dude. I mean, they're still gonna make tons of money because of the Marvel IP and because they know their mobile business. But like, everyone wanted PVE. Like, are you literally gonna after the debacle of Overwatch Two, <laughs> launch Overwatch Two? Yeah. Like a- when, <laughs> when when like you know happiness about what's going on with that brand is at its lowest you're going to launch a clone of of it ouch like wow. i'm going to try to i mean when it comes out i'm going to try to be open minded it's free to play it'll be on steam and epic uh for launch no consoles yet but i'm sure those are coming i will try it and i will try to have an open mind cuz i like a fun shooter um but i am not confident based on previous work from them at all and also their timing's weird hearing they've been working on it since pre-pandemic that's like that's a bit of a Kind of a red herring, a little bit like ooh, not red herring, scarlet letters. What I meant to say, I knew the color was in there. <laughs> yeah, well, it's 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 also net, like I haven't seen a Netties game that isn't monetized like Diablo. Oh hell yeah. yeah! Like you know, like I, yeah. I just I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a reason anyone's going to be enthused about this. Yeah. So some yeah. people are. I'm not. Have but to I put I, in I, a dollar to refill Peter Parker's web cartridges. There you go. You know, we, webs. you know what we should Swipe do? Swipe your credit card. Here's what we should do. Um, yeah, the ticket card from what the HP library of how to charge people and charge for his web cartridges. That's an awesome and terrible idea. What a horrible oh, that, future. Uh, it's Rick, uh, Rick Riccatello's. Oh, yeah. Guy was... <laughs> He's over at NetEase now. We just didn't know it. And, no, no, uh, but he he was famous for saying like if he, when he was at EA, if he could charge people for reloads, that's what they should do. Like, oh, you know, right, gun reloads, Call of Duty reloads. Yeah. He said when he was at EA yeah. or wherever he was. Those people exist. Like he, I, if that's true. Was, uh, yeah. You know, like they're just like, how do we get them to pay for reloads? Yeah, you're gonna hear a lot about how we feel about the monetization practices of the internet today, or the of the video games business. Uh, we'll try not to be too cranky about it, but we have some stuff to discuss which we'll get to here in a second as we talk about the games we played and the games we didn't play all right uh we didn't play dragon's dogma 2 even though (laughs) this is in shared play we didn't none of us played it. well yeah but we also literally ended last episode now i don't know if it was on the show proper if it was at the end of the stream but 
we definitely ended last week going, come back next week. We'll all have played Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah. Hey, guys, it's next week. Raise your hands if you played Dragon's Dogma 2. <clears throat> no hands? No, okay, no hands. well, let's see why we lied to him. Well, all right, well, so I, I want to catch... Oh yeah, I want to catch people up. What happened like at the show is because I bought it during the recording of last week's show. So did I. Oh sweet, Dragon Dragon Ball Two. Yep. After the week wrapped the show, if you're not someone who follows me on Twitter and saw my post or did that, I refunded basically minutes after the show ended because I saw the mostly negative. Scrolled down to the comments to find out why. Didn't like what I saw. Refunded immediately with zero hours played. You know, like as if I never bought it. Yeah, I had Which it installed. Fine. I had it installed, but never launched it. Um, I bought it during the show also. I think, John, you bought it a little earlier, right? You pre-ordered some yeah, days I before. Yeah, I pre-ordered it. John's, John is not afraid to throw that money out in front of some trains. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, because guess what? I will confirm you can still refund it just as easily. Not a problem. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, not a hard thing to do. So we all did this. Now, before you all jump up and down, all freaking out that, uh, that we over corrected for what turned out to be i felt like some pretty egregious um microtransaction practices uh i i just want to get out of the way right now yeah i know other games do it worse we've we've been on the record very heavily about a game we all own diablo 4 being really egregious about what they do i mean it's not worse than dv2 in my opinion but no continue, continue. it's i, I don't think it's worse clarify i did not refund due to microtransactions Oh, you didn't, did you? So we can get to that, but that okay. has nothing to do with why. That's I interesting did. because I did it for two reasons, and I have a feeling I might have done it for your two reasons combined. One of them was, I don't, this feels gross. I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this. And as a result, this thing happened that I talk about on the show all the time. It happened back when we were playing, uh, or not when we were playing, nobody played it, but when uh, Hogwarts Legacy came out, or any other game that has sufficient controversy of any kind be it microtransactions, business stuff, uh, political stuff. What I don't care what it is. Whatever that cloud of interest is around a thing without just the purity of a launch and hey, let's go play a video game and let's have fun and talk about it. Even with my hype problem, I can't enjoy it. That's 70 bucks I'm now expected to enjoy spending. I can't do it when everyone's talking like this. And I don't just mean us. Like I, It'll distract me like hell. The whole time I'm playing, every time I see... A fast travel thing, I'll go, oh, I could just go pay for that. And I'm not even going to do that. I'm not going to pay for it. That's not the reason it bugs me. It's in my head. I'm thinking out of the game too much. I'm not immersed. That is not worth 70 bucks right now. I may pick this game up in six months when A, bugs are fixed and issues are gone. Uh, B, maybe on sale. And C, maybe they've pulled back on some of that stuff. I don't know. That's all possible because I'll be out of that cloud by then. But right now, I'm in there huffing on it. And I hate the huff. I don't want to. I don't want your secondhand bullshit smoke. So I'm not playing the game because seventy bucks is not nothing. It's a, it's a decent amount of money. There, I could buy multiple games with it, which I did this week after I refunded it, and and I'm and I'm good with my decision for now. Like I don't, I don't like what they did. I don't like that none of that was talked about before the reviews hit or even during. Most of the reviewers didn't know about the uh, the page of forty or so or whatever it was. I don't know what the number was. Things that you could buy that were weird. Things like, oh, you want to make your character look different? Buck ninety nine. Uh, you want a new character, more than one? Another two bucks. Uh, some of the stuff, like the fast travel and a few other things, those are they they are in the game. No, 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 no new characters. Yeah, no, that's you, you not get, in you the get game. One save, you can buy. You get one save file. You can't delete yeah, the save. That's and there's no microtransactions. The only thing you could buy is an appearance change for your character. Right. That's effed. I don't like it. So. Until some of that stuff's Which, addressed. That was why I didn't buy it. It wasn't because of like avoiding controversy. It's because the actual mechanics were way over the line. Yeah. So um, so it's partly that for me and partly the just I hate the discussion around it so much. It's like, ugh. So I just went, all right, I'll. this is either later. You know, like when I got Hogwarts Legacy, I picked it up on sale. Got it for 29 instead of the 70 everybody paid. I really enjoyed it because nobody else was talking about it. <laughs> it was like this nice chill experience where I could just play it for what it was and how it was made. And I could finally tell my friend at Avalanche up the street, I could say, dude, you guys 
did some really nice work here and tell the art department I love it. Like that kind of thing. Like I could actually enjoy mm. it and feel good about my purchase. Right now it's just like, eh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to walk around in a mech and I'm going to farm berries. That's what I'm going to do. You all go fall off your wyverns and have a troll make a bridge accidentally and all the shit you see, these 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 funny meme things I'm seeing in Dragon Dogma 2. Enjoy it. That's great. But I'm I've got berries. I've got to go find some aluminum rods. I got shit to do. All right. I got a lot of comments <laughs> being disappointed in me about it. Oh, really? Ah, who cares? Yeah. I'm not disappointed well, in I, you, I, It got to me a little bit. Like, I definitely needed to unplug. I haven't streamed all week. It mm. kind of, like, it was annoying enough. I don't know if, if, like, that kind of level was your way, but there were a lot of people who were disappointed in the fact that I had refunded it because... Um, apparently all that stuff, there's currency in the game. Uh, it's quite easy to get apparently like, so, so why sell it if it's so easy? So, well, yeah, I mean, so the argument was like, don't worry about it. You should play it. I'd really like to hear what you think. Like, I can't believe you don't tell me. Well, some of them were like, please tell Scott not to return it. <laughs> really? Like, Dude, I returned it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like people were, people try to talk to you through me. Why though? Sometimes, like I understand, uh, I because I've got good response because I don't get nearly the amount of shit you get. <laughs> so, yeah, but I've learned something some, comes I, my way. I, I respond. The one thing I've learned over the years, I always end my statements like when I got on social and just said, "Here's here's what I'm doing and why I'm doing it." I made sure to put in there, "I don't care what anyone else does. Do your thing, have your fun, get your game. I don't care. Go for it." This is not a judgment against you. Mm-hmm. Like this, this idea that we have to turn game decisions, buying decisions, into crusades. And suddenly everybody's like, grab your rifle, grab your gun. It's time to head to the morning sun or something. I can't, it's a fake rhyme, rhyme I just made up out of nowhere. But my point is like, they want to get, let's go. And I'm like, no, it's just a game and I'm fine waiting. And so should you be. And if you're not, go ahead and play it. Get, go. Like if you want to get in there and this bothers you not at all, I think that's awesome. I wish I was you. I wish I could shut my brain off and not hear all this in my head while I'm trying to play a video game. But because I have limited time to do it as it is, and I really want to maximize that time and effort and money. I, I'm just not going to do it. It's okay. There's no crusade. There's Crusader Kings three. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. No, but, it's not. It's not that there was a crusade. It's just that I think the main point was that, uh, you know, something like there are games that have microtransactions in them that we do say is okay. You know, that we do live with. I, I, one that was brought up quite frequently was Infinite Wealth. New Game Plus is tied behind a fifteen dollar. I think it was fifteen dollars. Yeah, which we said we thought purchase. sucked. We all said it. No one likes that that it's there. Right, but but we still bought the game. I still bought the game and played it quite enthusiastically. Right. So like I had literal people ask me like, "What's the difference?" Like, well, did Bo mute for you? Oh, I yeah, he muted for me too. I was like, "Oh no, my internet demons are yeah, back." I thought it was me, but but we don't I, hear you I don't right know. now. I don't know if he can hear us because he's still talking. Has Capcom uh, Capcom killed his? Capcom's connection? like shut him down. Uh, he's he's on too much of a roll. Uh, let me make a note here in the thing. <laughs> oh, I called him Bay. Oh, Sorry. Oh, there you are. You're back. You're back. You cut. Know, you cut entirely. We heard no, uh, most of none yeah, of that. Yeah, and I don't think you could hear us because we uh, we were telling you and you oh. reacted not. Yeah, you're back now. Sorry. though. When when did I cut out? Uh, oh, that was weird. About it was... the moment you started your point. <laughs> like, it was like, oh. and let me tell you, and then it was like, oh no, I know what it was. Like, no, you said you and enth- you enthusiastically bought Infinite Wealth, wealth, and uh, play. Yeah, it people and, were asking yeah. me what the difference was. Like, why is it okay? They were genuinely. I got a lot of feedback, uh, genuinely asking me, what's the difference? Like, why would you avoid playing Dragon's Dogma two? Why would you tell people it's predatory? when infinite you, you, you've been raving about infinite wealth like that really isn't different you know yeah and that like really just exhausted me because um i we all draw a line somewhere yeah. i guess yeah. like they're all predatory practices infinite wealth, like you said infinite wealth should just include it in the game is bullshit it is bullshit yeah. and if it's a game you really want maybe you turn a blind eye or you accept it or you even pony up the money but Dragon's Dogma was not like a, a you know, must play. It was like on the high end. I didn't want to miss out on something kind of fun if it was going to be, a, you know, an Elden Ring style thing. It looked pretty cool. Yeah. But when I saw it, like really for me, it was like, I think they, I think they, they crossed a line with these microtransactions in 
only giving people one save file. Like that's what broke my brain was I, I can't delete my save I can't delete my save file and I can't start uh change change my appearance unless I pay for the tokens. And then I started to think about it and I'm like, well, if it's so easy to find some they're trying to find some sucker. You know, like it just felt gre- greasy. Yeah, it did. Uh, you know and, what you said it cuz what the the me just reiterate this and then I'll let you keep going obviously cuz I want to hear the rest of this, but you said it and it's important to emphasize this. Um this wasn't a okay, so when you come to Infinite Wealth, you come to it as a gigantic nerd for the last game. You loved it. And you can't wait to play the next one, John 2, right? You guys are stoked about it. And you hear about a $15 end game thing, and you're like, well, I'm probably not going to do the end game thing anyway. And I do think it's shitty, but man, I was so excited for this game. I'm still getting this game. So the line the line for that one is is, is different than it is for Dragon's yeah. Dogma. But in Dragon Dogma, Dogma's case, I don't have any affinity for the first one. I have no connection to it at all other than, ooh, a fun game's coming out that everyone is saying is a big improvement on whatever was great about the last one that we're in. Like, let's challenge the 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 Skyrim dominance of, of RPG style stuff, open world ideas, concepts, whatever. That's exciting. I'm into that. But I'm not married to any of this because I don't really, I don't know what it is yet. I don't have that allegiance to any of this yet. So that does make a difference. My whole point is, even so, we're not talking about make, taking a moral stance for everyone. We're talking about making our our own personal decisions based on our own guts. That's it. Yeah. That is all it I, is. I think I think I took a moral stance on it. I called it predatory. What's yeah, a moral stance? but that's still you expressing who you are and what you think and feel, not what everyone else would, should do. I would probably say if the same policy was with Yakuza, I like Yakuza so much, I probably would have bought it anyways. Like I don't, I would be hypocritical in that case probably because like that's how they get all of us. They take things we like and they know we like them and are willing to put up with it. And that's why mobile gaming successful. Yeah, I think there is a moral stance. I think if you call something predatory, you are at least in my case, it's, I called it that. Yeah, you're. Exp- um, I did too. And I, and you're expressing. I believe that yeah. it's predatory, and I think that is a moral judgment. If you're calling something predatory, like you know, sex predators, we don't like them. <laughs> That's why they call them sex predators, and it's the same with these commerce predators, uh, the, these these you know turd burglars uh, trying to take our money, and it's not you know they're going farther, they're going above and beyond what is reasonable in the marketplace. But, yeah, and that's a moral. You're right. It's a moral stance. But you did not once on the show or any other time that I'm aware of say, and if any of you buy it, may there be a curse on you and your children. It's not, no. You're not judging them. No, no. Who no, gives no, a no, shit if Nobody was being it? a dick. As far as I'm concerned, nobody was being a dick or telling anyone else what they should or should not do. But I think people look to us as role models. I think we can say that, but still then make decisions and people will want to understand why. Because like, I know it's a weird thing because we're all very humble people, but we are role models and people do look at what we do and decide and try to make sense of it. Yeah. And if they do apply it to their lives, but if they do, they truly do, then they'll understand what we're saying today, which is it was too far for me for this game. It's really that simple. It was just too far for me for this game. And, and I, and it pissed me off. As soon as I saw it, I went, really? No wonder none of the reviews said anything because they didn't tell them. Not a single review brought up that, that stuff. That I'll felt predatory. From, from my perspective, and I'll say why I refunded it, because yeah, uh, obviously I already refunded it, but I did not do it for the same reasons. Um, but uh, when you posted that, Scott, and I saw it, I, my, I'll i tell you my honest reaction to it. When I saw your post about it, I went, yep, it's a Capcom game, um, because uh, this is something that Capcom has been doing for a long time, including a game you just recently bought and started and played a little bit of, which was Devil May Cry 5. Um, is another real egregious example of this. Like, if you go down their microtransaction list, it's a huge list, and it's uh, the ability to purchase a lot of things um, with that are just available in the game. Like, you want more red crystals? You can give us money to do it. Like, Capcom's been doing this for a while. That doesn't make it okay. It was shitty when they did it for Devil May Cry. It's shitty now. 
Um, but it's not surprising to me. So when I saw it, my reaction wasn't like shock. It was like, you know, Capcom's doing a Capcom thing. Um, it hasn't been as bad with the Resident Evil titles, but even they have surprising, like, like you can, um, uh, I believe could be wrong. I didn't double check this before I started saying it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is right. I think you can spend real money for treasure maps. Yeah, those um, are in there. In the Resident Evil titles, yeah. which again is an item that's available in game. So like a lot of the games I play from them, this is familiar territory for me. Sure. So I was not in the camp of like, this is insane. I've never seen anything like this before. This was more like a guy that punches you every morning, punching you in the morning. And I was like, yeah, he does this. <laughs> um, he sucks. Uh, he should really stop. But uh, the 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 reason I ended up refunding it was um, twofold. One, the one save file is that's bad, and I, I that did surprise me. That's not tied to microtransactions at all. That is a game design choice that is uh, absolutely batshit crazy to me. Um, as somebody who notoriously starts and stops their mass effect save because that first sweeping <laughs> shot of commander shepherd yeah. looked a little weird how many times I'm... have we restarted no man's sky dude right, right. <laughs> we're gonna talk about another one where i erased an eight minute save of no man's sky to start it over again mm. um like yeah. i am a chronic restarter of video games so telling me i have one save file i can't delete it is like that's scary. That's immediately intimidating. And then I heard, you know, performance issues, which again, does not always deter me. I played Helldivers when it first came out. I'm a big fan of Helldivers. You had some issues. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of games <coughs> that I've played recently that have had issues. But here's here's where I am. It's unique to me. And again, your, your mileage may vary. Uh, you guys heard what I played last week. You're going to hear a lot of the same this week. I am in this like comfort gaming space uh i'm stressed out i'm looking for ways to relax yeah. and just chill with video games i'm looking for video games to supply a relaxation and escapism at the moment and what i kind of realized as i was reading more about the performance issues of uh dragon's dogma 2 was that between the the one save file between the performance issues this was not going to be a game that was going to de-stress me. This was going to be a game that was going to stress me out yeah, right now. It's going to add to it and not take away from it. I yeah. went, well, I'm not going to play it right now. So why did I spend whatever it was, $70? $70 plus dollars with tax, yes. Um, why did I spend that money for it to sit on my hard drive <laughs> and not get touched when this exact same thing has happened with so many games recently i'm just gonna take a break from this we'll see when it's fixed and i will come back to it i am 100 percent certain i will play dragon's dogma 2. it looks like a game i would enjoy yeah. but i'm not interested in like beta testing it through its performance issues and uh, like right now that's a bridge too far if you're in there and you're having fun or not experiencing issues, more power to you. I've been there. I played Arkham Knight when it first came out with no issues. Scott and I were apparently one of two people that had that experience yeah. with that game. I know what it's like to be the person that's going, I don't have any problems with this thing yeah. when everybody else does. But there was no guarantee for that for me. And uh, right now, I just want a casual gaming experience that's not going to make me angry so uh I, I you know what i think the game probably will be a great game i think a lot of people will like it i think it will be looked back fondly like a lot of like the first dragon's dogma honestly but by the time i get around to it there's a there's a pretty decent chance that isn't going to be a 70 dollars game when i'm excited for it and ready to go yeah and that's when I'll do it. And you know what? If it is $70 when I get to that point, I'll pay the $70 again. It's no big deal. But I don't need to do it right now for a game I'm not going to play, especially because I'm looking down my list of games right now. I haven't touched Lightyear Frontier, and I'm still trying to rebuild the roster of Frog Wrestling and WWE 2K24, and I still 
every waking moment i'm like i want more hell divers but i haven't been playing that for the exact same reason of i just don't want to be stressed out in a video game yeah i bought that game the mobius machine that scott talked about because i think the art style looks awesome i haven't touched that i bought pacific drive that game seems awesome but has a steep learning curve <laughs> yeah, it's all I'm about not ready stress. to have a deep <laughs> learning curve yeah. i bought last epoch i barely put any time into that i want to i bought grand blue fantasy relink which looks phenomenal and like a great time and might even scratch a similar itch to Dragon's Dogma 2, but I've put zero time into that. I've got all these games just sitting on my hard drive, begging to be played that I haven't touched. I don't need to spend over $70 on a game that I know is going to just sit there and join them. Yeah. So that's my reason. If you don't like the microtransactions, don't play it. I'm 100% behind anybody that wants to boycott it for that reason. To me, this is pretty standard Capcom fare. If you want to boycott all the Capcom, more power to you for that. They got to learn their lesson. Like, like absolutely do it. But uh, I'm not, I'm not standing on a a principle um, that I don't typically follow. I don't think they should micro. I don't think they should do microtransactions of these things. Just like I don't think like a dragon should have done microtransactions for its things, but. At the end of the day, I'm going to play the games I want to play when I want to play. Of course. And it's not, it's not a political statement. No, I don't think any of it was. We can say, yeah, we have our own personal feelings. For me, it was definitely like, I'm tired of this. I, now I'm grumpy because now they're doing it again. But in the case of like Devil May Cry 5, a 2019 game, I bought that on sale, what, two weeks ago for seven bucks? That's my line. <laughs> I have no problem doing that, even if that thing's riddled with possibilities for microtransactions. I'll never look at those. I'm just going to play it. And that may end up being how I played Dragon's Dogma 2. I have a pretty good feeling I will end up playing it as well, and probably sooner than that. But um, it's this is just one of those moments where there's a few things happening. Straw that broke the camel's back for a lot of people, and I respect them. If they felt like this was just one of these too far, Dragon's Dogma 1 didn't do this to them. That's another reason a lot of people are mad. Um and so they they see this as predatory and lame, and they don't like it, and they're going to make a big stink, a, a stink about it. Great, let them make their stink. Um, then I see a lot of people who spend the seventy bucks and want to justify the cost and sweep any issues under the rug because well they bought it and they everyone else better enjoy it if I'm going to enjoy it. I think that's crazy too. Like it's too extreme either way. Play what you want to play, and don't play what you don't want to play for whatever your own reasons are. It's that simple to me. And then. And don't gang up on Bogues. That makes me mad. <laughs> well, it's not, I wasn't ganged up on. I was just getting, no one, when you're you're getting feedback from people on something that happens, no one sees the other conversations that are taking place. So right, right. to you communicating to me, you're just communicating to me, but you don't see the five other conversations I'm having at the same time telling right. me I'm being foolish to not play the game. Yeah, but that's a, such a silly thing to say. It's such a silly, silly thing for them to tell you, though. It's silly. Well, it's. I mean, I don't. I. I don't know. Because uh, you know, the conversation's really one way when you're listening to any podcast. That's how it is, and we sort of we do value having our chat room available for people to discuss the games with us and stuff. We think it's a nice perk. But sometimes I think the main argumentation was that it was it's a nothing burger. Like you know, like how can you say it's predatory when you can just play the game and you know you're good at the you're good at games like this won't affect you at all like why would you avoid it yeah. and i do take so of the three of us on here i am the one that will take moral stances on games i'm don't don't play atomic heart don't play uh harry potter like i'm not going to tell people what they do but i've made those decisions based on moral moral reasons that outside of the game and this is another one of those i think what they've done here limiting the save file and preying on weak people who who somebody's going to pay that dollar 99 when they don't have to that makes me feel like a chud that's that you know it's like bragging about being the fastest gazelle right like the tigers won't get me cuz i'm good at running and i'm like well the tigers want to go after the gazelles with the broken legs and stuff like i don't know i don't feel great like i don't even want to think that i'm that way like Leave me alone. And that's where we connect, where I just don't want to be thinking about these things when I'm trying to sit down and have some fun. And they bring all these gross 
financial transactions into it, I can't really enjoy myself. You are, you and I are in the exact same boat. That is exactly how I feel about it. So yes, it is a moral stance. Yes. I don't want to play it for those reasons among others, but at the end of the day, I guess all I'm saying is, okay, well you've expressed that and you didn't try to tell anyone else what to do. You said what you think. And that's all I'm saying is that should yeah. be fine, no matter where yeah, it's coming I, from. I, I guys on a podcast or friends on the internet or a guy up the road, it doesn't matter. If he's got a reason to say that, great, he makes it. It doesn't mean he's telling you to have the same moral problems with it or the same decision making around it. He's just telling you how he feels. And I so, think that's where I get frustrated with it too, because even though, you know, again, it wasn't my reason for it, but like you do see the discourse, you do see people talking about it. And that's where I tend to get a little irritated because it's like, you know, like it's this, it's this common trend that we have where somebody does something wrong. And instead of telling the person who did wrong that they did wrong, we go and look at how everybody else reacted to the person who did wrong. And we focus on that. This feels like not focusing on the problem. Like Capcom has been doing predatory microtransactions in their games, and they are predatory. They're predatory to someone. Again, and nothing makes me more mad than they. Well, it doesn't impact me. Like Bo said, it's impacting somebody. Like it. Do, it doesn't matter if you're not the person who's buying it. Then great, I'm not talking about you. Congratulations. But somebody, they're doing it for a reason. They're not doing it because nobody does it. Um, they're the one doing it. We should be either telling them we don't appreciate it with our dollars by not buying the game. And if you don't care, buy it. Like, who cares? Yeah. But punish want. them. Don't go around looking for people who either didn't buy it to get mad at them for uh, not understanding or looking at the people who did buy it and shaming them for buying it and, and feeding the machine. Just Just take care of you. Like... I understand that it's frustrating because we did. I did experience this a little bit with Like a Dragon, where obviously that was a game I was very excited for, right? Yeah. I was mm -hmm. very, very much looking forward to it, very into it. And then all this news about predatory microtransactions come out. And it's like, you have to do that thing of like, I don't like this. This isn't you know, I, I'm unhappy about this. And you see people getting mad and go, ah, oh, F that game. I hate that game. I can't believe they would do this. And it feels, you know, for a brief moment, you're like, oh, they're, they're insulting my baby. And you have to take a step back and go, this isn't my baby. It's a video game. Everybody can decide whether or not they want to play a video game. And if somebody wants to not play Yakuza Like a Dragon and call that game dog shit because they didn't put New Game Plus in the game, that's fine. They should. That's their decision. That's their right as a human being to decide not to do it. Just like it was my decision to go, you know what? It doesn't even matter. I'm never going to touch the new game plus. Like I didn't do it before. I'm not going to do it again. So I, I understand what it's like to, you know, for those that are defending Dragon's Dogma 2 and the microtransactions, I get that it's hard to watch people you know, especially people, you know, that, that maybe you, you respect their opinions of, or you're interested in hearing discussion around, you know, you're listening to a video game show and you're like, I'm so excited about this video game. I can't wait to hear somebody talk about this game that I'm into and excited about. And then all they're talking about is the microtransactions. And like, I get that that's frustrating, but all we can really do is, is represent how we felt about it, how we came to it. And that's where each of us are individually. Um, so I understand where the frustration comes from, but at the end of the day, like, you're not going to want to hear the opinions of somebody that's playing something they don't want to be playing. Nobody wants that. You want authenticity. You want the three of us, whoever's listening to the show, you want the three of us to be who we are and whatever that is, warts and all. Um, we can't be drones that go, Oh, I love every game that has microtransactions. Oh, wait, you don't like those. Okay. I hate every game. That, you know you know what I mean? We can't do that. We have to be who we are. We have to make decisions based on what feels right to us individually. And that's it. It's really that simple. And I'm and none of us will ever prescribe something for somebody else and say, you must do this. But, you know, it's a it's a thing. I got defensive of Bo. I probably shouldn't, but I don't like that. No, it's fine. I I stood my ground, but I just I needed some touch grass time. 
as yeah. a result this week. There's it's, nothing wrong with that either. I've had a little bit of that lately. Too. I, we're all gonna die, and uh, you know, I really hate when just having inane conversations that are, you know, yeah. When you someone asks you a question and you give them the reason and then they want to keep arguing and that happens multiple times, I just was like, I just I don't want to talk to anybody anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like that's that's all. It's not it's not dire or anything. It's just like, all right, well, piss off everyone. It's shocking how much you know. I I have to make an admission. I guess I hadn't really thought about it, but the wow scene was the most toxic feedback loop I'd ever been involved in for oh, I bet. 12 I'm... plus years, whatever the 16 years of that. And, um, man, it was bad sometimes. And there were times where I was just like, why am I doing this? People are freaking is. terrible. It still is. But my point is <laughs> it, it hardened me. It gave me calluses that I don't acknowledge all the time, or I don't even acknowledge to myself that I've built up where now someone will go, Oh, Mr. Soapbox with his moral decision about this, but he had no problem buying a Steam version of Diablo after I already owned it on another, and I, you know, this whole thing. And I, it's just yeah. so easy for me to blow off now. It's just like, yeah. all right, dude, go laugh. Although I, have, I have a funny, fo- I have a funny follow-up because last week I was complaining on the show about someone who said a five-hour No More Gone video, I'd rather go play indoor soccer. Uh, <laughs> that person's in our guild. He's a core listener. It was just a joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt, and he's like, did I do something wrong? And I'm like, uh, no, man, sorry. I thought you were someone trolling me. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to tell, you know. We don't know sometimes. But, but he did, I remember he did say, I'm going to go play soccer. Like, it was like, it made sense, but I took, I took it badly and then it was wrong so yeah, that's yeah. kind of the nice flip side sometimes is you do get a lot of negativity and you you accidentally you know it's a ration in the guild yeah, um, yeah i i would yeah. i would say wow wow's been the wow guild has been nice everyone's in there's very positive it's, oh you have a great group there's nothing wrong with them well yeah. it's our listenership right so right. it's the show um it's an example of the people in our show we'll yeah talk about that a bit more that's later. why it was so discordant back in the day because it would be people in our guild who were great and then there would be people outside of it that were just listeners or whatever and sometimes it would cross over because somebody on a more toxic end of things would say did you hear what these guys said on this instant show and then people would tune in and then just flood my inbox and it used to be hard to know what was up or down back then, but I've just gotten harder to it, I guess. I don't know. The 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 bottom line for me is just like play what you want and have a good time. No, I'm sure because I listen. We, we all, both John and I, were long time listen, listeners to your show. You were not the sweaties of the B- World of Warcraft podcast. <laughs> <The> sweaties. <laughs> I did not listen to your show to find out how to win in PvP. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it was never going to be that. <laughs> there, you know? I, I listened I to your show to of... go. Ha, ha, Scott says, okay. <laughs> I will say I, de- I didn't improve as a player at all listening to Instance, and I loved the show to death. But you know, <laughs> yeah, we weren't there for that. Like, that. That's not you know. But I got some people more just. Ed- education from patrick's mod of the week segment than i did 15 <laughs> episodes of the instance but yeah, that's not like, why instance i was is there. like it's the show with the guys that talk about chorizo and yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah no we were we were aiming for a very different vibe and uh, i think we i think we so, did so all that to say is i think sometimes people don't I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I get I don't so know. nostalgic just... when we bring up old instance, though. Yeah. I know I bring it up yeah. every time, but that org episode just oh, yeah, that lives killed. in my head. <laughs> Trust me, I still have As a, burn. a happy place. It makes me so happy. My, I have a wound that seeps from the og or the org episode where I thought og org was spelled or was pronounced <laughs> ogre or ogre was pronounced. It wasn't org. just that you did it; it's how long you did it before you got corrected. <laughs> I don't know why that was a thing. I feel like I'm. Uh, I feel like I was ten then. So and it weird. was such an ogre heavy episode. You're like, I was up there doing my org dailies <laughs> with all those orgs. And half the listeners yeah. thought I was talking about orgrimmar dailies, and you know they got it. They thought the terminology was more about something to do with the orc home or the you know the city. Ogremar. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I realized after when I finally figured that I'm like, how long have I been doing this? And then I realized since the beginning. <laughs> Like an hour, like yeah. an hour of org talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was so good. Oh, it was, it was good so times. Good times back then. Uh, anyway, so we didn't play Dragon's Dogma too, as you can tell. Um, I yeah. did play uh, a bunch more front or Lightyear Frontier. Now, as I told you guys last week, I played the Game Pass version because I wanted to see before I buy, and I liked it so much. I bought it on Steam now and have it on Steam Deck and on my PC, and it's a uh, great already perfectly fine steam deck game 
Um, it's not currently verified, but that's just, it hasn't been evaluated yet. Um, anyway, I'm super into it. I started over, uh, learned a few things from me fiddling in the first run. So this time I was like, okay, I know where I want to kind of set up my first camp and what I have to do with the first few minutes or whatever. And I'm having a blast. It's exactly, you talking about chill games, John, this game is so chill. Um, I know it actually should be on my playlist. Uh, cause like just the vibe from the demo was like, Oh yeah, I could just relax playing this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is that for sure. And it's just really pretty. And the day night cycle, some people complain they're too short. Um, I would, I would agree with that if I fell over dead like in Stardew Valley or one of these other games where if you don't go back and get home in time you'll faint or whatever and you'll lose stuff you'll lose the items you carry like there's there's downsides to doing that in these these kinds of farming sims uh, or life sims not in this game you just work through the night it'll tell you when it's morning and then you just go back to camp and some of your resources respond the plants you were growing have, have popped you don't actually have to sleep it's just a it's just a way to kind of check on your stats and see how you did over that day and that sort of thing. Um, I started getting into uh, stuff I hadn't seen before, which is like I can bring down the merchant ship now. And they come and they land every day for a certain period of time. And it lets you know if you're out doing things far away from from your homestead, it'll say merchant ship has arrived. So I'll clomp back there on my mech and they'll have unique items that day. Uh, sometimes it's – they do it a little bit like if you're playing a, a – a game like freelancer and you go to the spaceship and find out what's selling the highest or, you know, it's like stock market oh, yeah. green yeah. versus red, that sort of thing. So that'll happen. So sometimes they'll come back and say, Oh, uh, you know, whatever this juice is that you make from plants is like double today and they'll pay double for it. So you're like, well, I'm just going to unload all that right now. I'll make more. So you'll sell a bunch of those cause it's a profit. And then you'll see, Oh, they're, they're taking these weird geodes you find sometimes just out working around and they're 450% higher right now. So you sell those. And then you buy the stuff they bring with them. And sometimes it's like new mech parts or a new style of mech front end. Like the engine looks like an old jalopy or something. So you decide, well, I want to buy that blueprint. Do I have the money? You know, there's this whole little mini game market thing going on there. And then also the uh, there's the pad where you're now upgrading your mech. So you, you set out on this pad uh, and do your upgrades. And you can set some of these upgrades as like a quest. Like you don't have the item, so you'll mark it as a quest and then go find the stuff, come back to your upgrade. And it's things like, you know, instead of having to hose hose each plant over, you know, to have it get watered, you can build up with the uh, left trigger, build up a ball of water that splashes the entire pad and they all get watered at once and higher capacity for that. Uh, you upgrade your, your cutter so it can cut through harder, like hardwood trees which you're going to need for other things you want to make. I mean, this is all standard stuff if you've played a game where, you know. Yeah, but the mech conceit is, like, such a cool idea for yeah, this, right? Yeah. Like, it really takes it outside of the bounds of, like, realism, where it's like, oh, it has to, you know, you got to get this. You got you got to make a hoe. Mm-hmm. You got to make an axe. You got to make a better axe. Yep. That's... Like, and it just all of a sudden, it puts it in this place where, like, now you can have weird superpowers and, like... Uh, as dumb as it is and granted the novelty only lasts so long like just the like using that spike to break rocks yeah it's so much cooler than going out and like using a hammer or something like you're using a giant saw and a spike to get your materials and yeah like yeah it could probably look a little cooler like (laughs) you got this massive saw arm and you're just still like kind of punching a tree but like you know, at the end of the day, like it is cooler than what you've seen. It's way cooler. You're day. you're totally right. The conceit is everything because everything else here is kind of not that crazy. Um, you know, it's set on a planet with weird names for things and stuff like that. So I guess that's unique and it is beautiful compared to most of these survival games. But this one or even just simple farming games, but this one with the mech just gives you this weird, like you said, conceit. The conceit of the mech is kind of everything. And it's fun to like get out of the mech. Sometimes I'll find like a tree with a bunch of uh, roots that are everywhere. And I'm like, that looks like something I could get into, but I can't with the mech. So how am I going to do it? Oh, right. I'm a little dude in this mech. I can get out and do shit. So I will exit the mech and I'll go under there. Like it's a little cave in there and there's all these like rare things I hadn't found yet. And you bring all that out, throw it into your mech. Now your mech's storing it. You take it back to town. Like there's some, there's a lot of that going on and, 
Um, I love when the mech falls over because I'm walking on the wrong rocks or something and I have to get out and reset it and then get back in it. Yeah. It's fun um, to do that stuff. And the music's really nice. And it's just, I don't know, man, it's the most chill thing. I put a ton of time in that. I'm going to keep going. I only have one complaint. It's in early access, so I don't know. You know, maybe this gets improved. It's not a technical issue, but it is not always clear what I should be working on next, where most of these games are pretty clear about that. It's like, well, now you need to build the the coal machine or, you know, whatever. You, they, they, do, they do a bunch of that in the early goings, but now I'm at a stage where I'm like, oh, it says I need aluminum electronics. Well, I know how to make aluminum rods or to mine them. I know how to make aluminum parts, but how do I then smelt those into what they're calling aluminum products? or uh, uh, electronics. And I assume I'm going to have to find something in the world that will then give me that blueprint or I have to wait for the ship, but they're not telling me how to get those. So there's a little bit of mystery going on about where I'm going to get certain materials and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's fine. It's not making the game not fun. It's just, there have been a couple of times I don't know where to go. Should I sleep maybe in the morning? She'll tell me because I do have this lady up at the station who keeps sending me messages and she'll talk to me and tell me stuff I need to know or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, uh, I, I, I'm very happy to say that I think what I saw when we first saw this trailer at a Microsoft event or something, uh, uh, last year or whenever it was, and I got excited then this is, it is giving me exactly what I'd hoped it was going to be, um, at least thus far. And uh, I'm having a ball with it. So Lightyear Frontier on Steam, I think it's 17 bucks, 10% off for its launch. And I haven't had really any bugs with it. Like so far, that stuff's gone fine. Nice. Um, yeah, it's really good. Uh, what else? Oh, so I, you know, you've been trying to find your comfort zone, right? Uh-huh. I've been trying to just find my the not just what I need to scratch an itch, but the itch itself. What's my itch right now? <laughs> yeah, it's a weird way of this. saying it, but uh-huh. you ever feel that way? You're just like, I don't even know what kind of game I want to play right now. Like this yeah. feeling of I was all geared up for Dragon's Dogma, didn't pull the trigger, or did and refunded it. Got all this, you know, money in uh, in my Steam wallet. What am I going to do? And then I remembered in 2022, I had gotten a key forever ago from the devs of Dying Light to Stay Human. But I never did anything with it. I forgot I had it. And that happens sometimes. I totally spaced it. And people really like that game. Uh, and I thought, well, I like the first one. It's a little intense, but I'm maybe in the mood for some open world and, you know, I don't know. I like I like what they're selling. So I installed that. And they have done a ton to that game since it launched. It's called I barely bought this game. I don't remember. Buying you don't it. remember buying it. Um it's got some really cool co-op stuff. It'd be fun to try sometime, but um anyway, they their fans love them cuz they're always updating things and it's th- it's those kind of developers who are constantly, you know, tweaking and listening and and um you know, the first game was a bona fide hit. This one's done well as well. Anyway, I finally played a bunch more of that. Everything's got Troy Baker in it. That's just the life we live now. All right, everyone, accept it. Troy Baker's in all your Bring video games. Bring Troy Baker into your home. Yeah, because that's where he is, whether you like it or not. Your guy's voice is Troy Baker's voice. Um, it's an amazing game because I can tell this is made somewhere. I don't know where they are, somewhere, uh, Sweden or somewhere. And they use a lot of local voices to try to sound like Americans and it's hilarious results for the most part. Very funny stuff because they get words so wrong sometimes and it made me laugh. Um, but really fun and, uh, a little scary. I, you know, I don't like scary games, not really a fan, but this is more, it's like parkour going out at night, still scary as shit, but I'm getting better at that. Um, I don't know. That game's cool. So I'm playing a bunch of that. Dying light, stay human. Uh, and then I wanted to finally make a serious start, like a real effort to play Crusader Kings 3. Oh, boy. I Man, know. I tell myself I'm going to do this pretty <laughs> frequently, and it never pays off. I hope you had more luck than me, Scott. It <sighs> has never happened. Well, I keep, like, I bought it ages ago, right? The game's been out since, well, it's not that old, 2022 also or something. 21 2020 maybe. came out 2020. Crusader Kings 3 it's yeah. four years now four years okay well, that's a decent wow. amount of time so though. what Bo just told me <laughs> just to, just for clarity's sake is yeah. that for four years yeah. 
I've had because I bought this game in the Microsoft Store for some reason. Oh, I don't weird. remember why I did it. That is weird. Oh, I do because it was Trying on Game Pass happy. for a while, yeah. and they gave you a discount if you bought it on Game oh, Pass. Oh, that's why. Okay. No, that makes sense. Why wouldn't you so do it that way? I've had this game in the Microsoft Store for four years. It has been well, up until I had to do my computer refresh. It has sat on my hard drive, and I've looked at it. Anytime I opened up the Xbox app and gone, one of these days, and for four years it hasn't happened. Oh my gosh, the window with the I, gameplay that I you know. just had. I know. It lined up perfectly to where my head was on that person's Oh, head. you're the guy. <laughs> you're the king. <laughs> you're the regent that I'm trying to... Oh, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's very distracting. Trying to assassinate the regent up in the corner. Looks a lot like John. Um, anyway, it, it, I decided to finally really give that like my full attention to the tutorial. Because I've tried this before and failed. That tutorial yeah, well, is thick. It's like it's not just a tutorial you gotta pay attention to. It's it's a lot. Did you get through it? I guess because I, I did. know I did the tutorial mission. Yeah, I did. I got through it, um, and I got to the point now where it's like you've done all the basics. There's lots more yeah. to learn, but you'll learn them <laughs> knowing the. And I'm like, okay, here we go. So I am in a game, moving forward, doing shit. I don't think I'm good at this yet. I don't really. Uh, there was a review on on uh, on. Um, uh, Steam that made me laugh. The guy said, uh, thumbs up. I have no idea what I'm doing. And he did that <laughs> review two hours in and I checked his time played since. And the guys played something like 600 something hours. Wow. So apparently it's stuck. And I went, you know, if this guy who admitted he didn't know what he was doing can do it, I can do this. It's a real test of one's supposed self-diagnosed attention deficit disorder. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you took the pretest. I did take the pretest, and it kind of said I was a little high. So, <laughs> so this was going to be my thing where I was like, you know what? I'm really, I am going to focus. I'm not going to do anything else. No music playing, nothing. I'm just going to look at this game. I'm going to read everything it says. I'm going to try everything. And if I didn't understand it, I'm going to go back and look again. I'm going to hover over tooltips. And I, I did. Do I still, do I know exactly how to, what I'm doing? No, there are a ton of spinning wheels in this game, a ton. I understand why people think it's amazing because I think there's depth here that I just am barely scratching. But I want to get there. I want to taste it. And I already assassinated a bishop who was trying to sneak money out of our treasury. He's dead. Oh, so, shit. Yeah. Man. A religious dude, a man See, of the cloth. That's why I want to learn it because the stories are so cool. Anytime someone talks about it, it sounds like the most interesting thing. Yeah. It and does, right? That's why I want to learn to play it. But I'm even like this, like for all the times I say like, oh, yeah, I'm playing Civilization VI again. Yeah. Like I'm even that way with Civ VI. I got in and I was like, I don't remember what half this stuff does. <laughs> like what does two food tiles mean when I look at a thing? Like I don't remember. Yeah. And I know the last time I did Civ VI, I did a deep dive. Like I was watching videos on here's our tier list of the best wonders you get like i went deep on that game but all that knowledge is gone yeah post. i definitely filed that in a this can be replaced if needed and i i, yeah, I yeah. just noticed uh there's a big patch of russia because i guess it it gives you like the real names that they were called at the time yeah of the very regions. very historically accurate but the stories it tells uh, are your own but yeah so there, apparently there's a big region in russia called come mania yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, this is great. I'm like, we have an email about that later, Bo. We have an email. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, this ties into something we're going to be talking about yeah. later. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be good. Uh, I just, it's just, it's not a small area. It's like really big. I just see the word common, super large letters. Yep. <laughs> Russia was doomed I'm from like, the start. Come mania. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a conference, like a Vegas thing. You don't want to go to. You don't want to go to. Yeah, Canada. it so sounds like you know the AVN for something. Well, it's porn's big yearly uh, event. You yeah, know, that's where porn was invented. Celebrities, Every, everybody's coming. She's there dancing. They got Mr. T. Uh, you yep. know. Uh, he's a special guest referee at Come Mania. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. T. Why Mr. T though? It's WrestleMania, oh, okay. the, like describing the first WrestleMania. <laughs> like, just go to the Steam page yeah. if you like. Don't take my word for it. The map's on there. That's where I'm seeing it on Steam. Oh, I'm sure. I'm gonna zoom out and look though later when I get in there. Yeah. Um. But here, here's uh, here's the thing. It's very pretty. Sounds amazing. Uh, it looks. It's just a cool looking game. Like, there's no reason not to play this other than the steep learning curve. And 
I do feel like I at least got into class and I'm starting to understand the textbook. But I'm okay. serious about this. I really want to give it a shot because people Does want to feel a little about sad. It. Like, because one of the things I, I'm like, I want to. Sorry, I'm trying to take you guys seriously, but I can't stop thinking you're talking about a game called Come Mania <laughs> right now. I'm trying yeah. not to really badly, yeah. but it's all my brain is picturing well, I, around the I, conversation. I was just gonna, so yeah. I'm going to just try and be quiet yeah. and just right. put up with my chuckles. All right. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It, it, it struck me as well. Yeah. But. I was just gonna say the one thing that makes me feel sad is like, oh, I need to play this with people. Like it, like there's all these fun stories, right? Well, these stories are good because you want to share them. Mm -hmm. And I always feel like when I'm about to get into it, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna play this by by myself. Yeah, it's purely a single only, player game. Am I yeah. the only one that's gonna get joy from patricide or whatever the hell's going on? In Actually, I assume it is. I don't know if there are any multiplayer stuff. I don't know. I didn't look. Yeah, or even just like streaming it, right? Just to be like, like that's sharing the story like I, i'm surprised i guess it, i guess because the interface is so obtuse it's probably not something people want to watch but it feels like it's full of stories yeah it's really but. cool like it's i i know i understand why it's so big i agree with you i think there it would be cool if there was a way to even if you couldn't play multiplayer that you could somehow share multiplayer uh events that would affect each other in a way or or maybe there was just a way to envoy over to your world or i guess that would be too weird for the historicalness of it but that would be cool yeah it's probably best enjoyed solo it just always feels like i always get that little thing you know where it's like oh this is a story-based game and stories are made better in the sharing yeah especially because it's a unique story it's not like we're all seeing the same story yeah but this is once again john's fault because i Went to this after got the Civ Six itch, which I still have that itch. I'm gonna keep playing that, but I was like, "Ooh, Crusader Kings, right? Maybe now, maybe now." Well, my brain's in this mode. I could really go for it, so I'm trying. So we'll see. We'll see how this turns out. So far, so and you good. You can teach me because I would learn better from you than their tutorial. Oh, it's just so bad right now. But wait, yeah, I'll graduate a couple of classes and then I'll I'll get with you. Awesome. Um, I also did a thing. This is also funny because I think this was a John suggestion a while back, but that System Shock remake uh, that came out not long ago, last year sometime. I mean, I did play it. I still have installed. I did the first chapter. Was it you? John, did who you talked play about it? Yeah. John, do you play it? I remember well, I'm a it. Huge, I'm a huge System Shock 2 fan. I have not played the, the remake, remake, but I think, Bo, because you did try it, I think we talked about it on the yeah. show. That must have been That's it. What I remember talking about it. It's excellent, but like so far what I play it, I keep meaning to get back to it. So yeah, I glad played... you decided to jump in. That's yeah, awesome. it's cool. It was on sale, and I also was just like, hmm, didn't someone talk about this on the show and was very positive about it? And we just, did a, so... we just did a whole Play Retro episode about the System Shock games, and nice. it just got me in the mood. I'm like, I'm going to go play that. So I did, and that's really good. Like real good, yeah. It's like it's solid. Like if you're looking for a good game to play, that's why I was I was shocked how little press this game got for it being a System Shock remake. Like you, you, know, you hear about some games, you still hear about well, where's this character in Destiny Two? It's like who gives a shit? Like System Shock. <laughs> some somebody talk about that game. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. yeah. And I hope they're making System Shock 2. These same devs seem like they've got the chops. I would love to see that happen. I remember playing that back in the day. I don't have a lot of memories of it. I'd never played one, so this was like, or not seriously anyway. I may have tried it back in 94, 95, whatever it was. But it's uh, it's really cool, and it's a very faithful game to what made the game good in the first place, but also is this beautiful engine with the weirdest effect. Like, it's unreal engine but the the world is pixelated but not it's hard to explain you get up close to stuff and i don't mean it blurs i mean on purpose it's like kind of like you're in tron world a little bit it's really weird i love it though it's really cool anyway not very far in that but i i hope to get more done in system shock also plays well on my steam deck which is nice uh then just other stuff i've already been playing boar blaster is still playing that Palaltro. Uh, mostly when I've got some toilet time. Very excited for that to come to phones. <laughs> toilet time with blood. Right? Yeah, it's good. That game's great. Um, Raven's Watch, uh, again, thanks to Bo for that recommendation. And our playtime, that's super fun, so I played more of that. And then uh, that was about it for me this week, I think. John, uh, you talked about your comfort plays, but let's get into them a little bit more. What are you, uh, 
What are you spending time in that makes you comfortable? Well, I'm still deep in another run of Baldur's Gate 3, um, which is... My goodness, I hadn't played much of the Dark Urge playthrough. And I hit what was probably the first big... I don't know how mandatory it is, because obviously, I, you know... I don't know what all the choices lead, but there's kind of a big moment where the game kind of shows its hand a little bit more besides just like, oh, my character sometimes has some wacky thoughts and does some wacky things. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, it's more of a forced like showing of your hand of what the dark urge is going to be. And... Uh, was real rough because it actually involved a character i quite liked from my first playthrough um i was like oh this character's great and there was a whole scene uh with this character that i had never seen before where they sing a little song i thought that was nice yeah and uh then uh, the dark urge took over and things got weird um it's actually what, what they're doing with that playthrough is so intriguing it's actually at odds with the slower pace of that game because like every time i go to bed now in the game i'm like oh we gotta get some dark urge business like i'm so intrigued and because i'm playing on a higher difficulty i'm taking a lot of rests and there's a lot of like is this the time no we're not doing any <laughs> okay it's fine oh is this the time i have a feeling it's going to be mostly uh saved for like chapter breaks and stuff like that yeah. um but my whole party uh is watching me they all think i'm awful um and that's fun like it's definitely a completely different perspective on the game and uh it's really an interesting one to explore so it's you know, it's very similar. I'm not playing as like a wildly different character than the first time I went through. I'm making a lot of the same decisions, but at the same time, like it feels very different, which is a real testament to how good that game is at what it does, is that it can feel so different even when I'm doing similar things. And there's some situations that I get into and I'm like, oh, well, I'll do this because this is what I did last time. And something like that option won't even be there. It's like, well, how did I get this the last time? Um, you know, whether that's finding entirely different sections of the game, different outcomes, different, uh, you know, ways that things can go down. Like, it's just crazy how deep that game is. But uh, making my way through it, I'm almost done with, Act one, I'm getting real close. Yeah. I'm dangerously close to the end of act one. Um, so we'll see where all that goes into act two. I think I am gonna stick with it. Like every time I go, oh, maybe I'm done for a while. I you know, I got stuck on the the protector of the forge fight for a while. Mm. Um, because I think the first time I played it, I think I just brute forced it and killed the thing. Mm. And on the higher difficulty, that was certainly not an option. I had to actually use the hammer mechanic and play smartly and tactfully around it. And that tripped me up for a while. I was like, ah, I'm done with Baldur's Gate 3. And then I loaded it up and won the fight. And was like, oh, this is the greatest game ever. I love yeah. it. So that game's good for that going. feeling of if you have a frustrating night, you go back in the next day with a save and you're like, oh, if I was just thinking, I can do this. And then you, yeah. you you win the fight. That's a great thing, actually. My daughter just beat it. My second daughter. Now I have two daughters who have beaten Baldur's Gate three before me. So you got to get into it, Scott. Maybe well, that's what you should do. Don't if you if you want a role playing experience, just start playing Baldur's Gate again. Just get I mean, in there. I mar I wouldn't even mind picking up my old save and go where I was in Act two. Um, but I'm. I don't know. I just I, just start I, fresh. Do things real different. Role play something different. Pick a class you've never played before. Yeah. Or just be uh, Garpoon. Make a barbarian Could and just role play Garpoon through the whole thing again. Sure. It's one of the best games for throwing other people. Like <laughs> yeah. offense, offensive throwing. Like you just jack up your strength and you can pick up a lot of people and just throw them off the map. Really? You don't get to yeah. do that in many games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know you can get, a, you can kick people off cliffs and all that, but I didn't know I could like barbarian no, no. them right off. Well, you know. Carlac has a subclass, but I think anyone can spec into it where you get like improved rage, and the whole yeah. thing is you get improved throw, yeah. which is not in regular ass D and D. It's like a Larian thing, or it's not. You're not. Sho you can shove too. You can do lots of stuff on your turn. You shove people off of pits, then you pick them up and throw them off pits. 
Uh, you can just pick up all the weapons and throw them at people. Like I, I think my barbarian didn't really melee swing as much as they just threw all the weapons <laughs> on them at people. I clearly didn't but, use Carlac right then because I didn't have her do much of that. She was no, mostly swinging throwing swords. stuff. Is super fun. Yeah. All right. I also got it's to all live. about the throne. And that's Garpoon. To... Garpoon has the most memorable throw, I think, in TTRPG history for us, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. that was fun. You threw the bad guy. Remember, it was a John's inverse campaign. You just threw the bad guy off the cliff, and that's how we concluded it. Yeah, I always yeah. feel like if John ever won offs again, we should we should revive those characters because they were really fun. I enjoyed oh, them. You miss, fun. You miss Baffo Salt? Yeah, Baffo dude. Salt's the Inspector detective. Baffo Salt. Yep. Yeah. He was a great uh, foil to my character. I like that a lot. It could be fun. Yeah. But uh, I got to live a dream that I've had in Baldur's Gate uh, when I played the first time. Um, again, possible spoilers for Act One, but it's pretty early, and I feel like you've had time. Sex um, with Shadowheart. Oh no, it's not. It's not that. No, okay. no, 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 right. no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not the dream she's you've not, had. She's she's not my top tier. She's not even my second tier. Wow. Sorry, all you Shadowheart stands, but uh, I'm more on the side of Carlac and Basil. Uh, they're they're better. Yeah, um, Shadow Heart's fine too. We're all she's great. fine. She's fine. We're, we're all great, great characters, great. but you know she's. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> when I first played through, they give you this uh wyvern poison in the druid enclave, and then one of the situations you find yourself in is there's a big goblin party. My brain immediately went to, wouldn't it be great if I could poison all these goblins? Like that was the that was my solution to the problem presented, which is there's a shitload of goblins <laughs> that you got to either walk through or kill or deal with. And I was like, I don't know how to do it. Like I tried a couple of things that never really worked. And I was like, I guess you can't do it. But to me, it felt like that was really a setup. I just hadn't found the right thing, the mouse over, because it totally turns out you can poison <clears throat> all those goblins with the wyvern poison. And nice. I found it this time. And I didn't I know that did it and i was so freaking stoked especially because my character for the first time ever it feels like is not very good at persuasion they are decent at intimidation so after i poisoned most of this party one of the goblins comes up to me and he goes you 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 poisoned him you killed him and i can't persuade him Like i'm like i don't know we got to find who did this so i didn't roll that instead i rolled intimidation where i was like yeah and you better not tell anybody i did it either (laughs) And the gum's like, yeah, what poison? That's fine. That's fine. So he's running around totally aware that I poisoned half the party, killed all his friends, but he's so scared of me. He's not going to tell anybody else. And he's just walking around the camp going, somebody's poisoning, folks. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. He's just now parent. No one's going to believe him. He's just like that guy (laughs) raving lunatic that he swears he knows the truth about what happened to the goblins. That's great. Yeah. So that's, that's that's been a ton of fun. But, hey, even though I'm doing just comfort gaming this week, I do get to talk about something that is slightly new and relevant, even though the game itself is old. I know you guys already know, but did you know that No Man's Sky got another update? I did. I got in there, too. Mm-hmm. I Tell me. Okay, so I was told that the Orbital update was all about, you know. It's uh, out already? Yeah, I it's out. It was a- Oh, I thought it was an announcement. So they oh, they were going to redo the the space stations. And this is the one thing, dude, since day one of that game, I was always like, I realize this game is huge. There's a lot to worry about and do. You got unique planets with creatures crawling on them that none of them look the same. The endless universe, all these star systems. I understand that you kind of had to do a little sameness with the space stations. I'll accept that. Boy, I wish it was different, but it's fine. And they they fixed it. Yep. It's amazing now. Sorry, I'm taking your thunder. Tell me what you no, thought. No, but it is cool. Like, I haven't gotten to do much because, as we discussed earlier, I started a brand new save. Mm. Um, and I so I had to go through all the tutorial business. But, uh, again, we're in this weird stage where that game gets so many updates. I don't even know if the thing that I'm praising is from this update or a previous update. Right. But, so we're that game's on year eight, by the way. So, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Just for reference. Crazy to me. How well oh, um, anyway. Yeah. So we're so you so I had the same feeling when I played. It's so nice now. Yeah, I like so much the better. UI a lot better. It seems much improved. Yeah. And I did finally make it to a space station. 
and it was very cool it looked cool i got in there was a big robot looking over everything that was neat to see and uh like it it just looked like a cooler space station and i'm sure there's going to be different ones and they've toyed with this a little bit where like in previous updates you could go to one that was taken over by like rogues and outlaws mm -hmm. and it was still the basic space station layout but like you know there were people with like pop-up tents and stuff like that and then there were also abandoned space stations that you would occasionally find where it was the one space station but it was all fallen apart and, mm -hmm. and messed up yeah. um so there was some variance but now you know there's more and I didn't get to play with it because I'm on a brand new character. I can't afford it, but I did pull up the ship customization menu, and I think that's going to be really yeah, cool, too. Yeah, dude. That's another big thing they added, yeah. which is you can customize your ship. You can pick from various parts, whether you want to do, you know, like a fighter or a hauler or a science vessel, whatever, and you can go, well, I want this nose, and I want these wings, and I want yeah. this color. Which is huge because like before you basically stood around in like places where ships landed. So usually a space station or like down on a planet where they had a bunch of landing pads and you basically just shopped for ships. You tried to make as much money as you could and you basically sat there and went, that looks cool. Yeah. That looks cool. It's and like, you scan it and you go like, oh, it's an S rank ship. It, too bad it's ugly and dumb and now you can get your cool s rank ship and you can modify it to look the way you want and that's that's huge like that's really really cool. and they don't make it just a menu it's like this awesome big pad with a hologram of what your ship's gonna look like and you get all this interface to like put parts together i didn't mess with it either very much because it's still out of my price range even at my couple month old save but it looks so cool. I can't wait to mess with that because I like haulers. I like fat ships, like yeah. just big, gnarly. Like they don't need to be sleek for me. I just want like a, like a, tr like a, a slave one ass looking, you know, weird ass looking ship. And and yeah. they'll let me do it now. And I didn't even know that was part of the patch. I was like, what is this? Lost my mind. Also, you can talk to that big head robot head. I know, I did. Yeah. I went over and it was like, let me tell you, the base is operating within 87% functionality, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, this thing's cool. And there's some way to override it, which sounds like pirate shit to me. Like, yeah, yeah, that goes down the whole pirate avenue and stuff like love that. It. It's just, like, it just keeps expanding. And again, you know, like, it, there's a lot of similarities. It's not like you're going to play it and go, this is a completely different game than what was there before, but it just keeps expanding in ways that make the the game interesting and like it still blows my mind that i log into the game and it's and you know i arrive on a planet and it's like you discovered and it's like nobody else has been to this planet yeah. after eight years of this game being out and everybody exploring and everybody doing their own thing and the way gamers just go 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 Nobody has been on this planet. I'm the first human being to ever be here. Yeah, like, it's yeah. just a cool feeling to me. You do see the loading screen has a lot more names pop than it used to, right? You'll see yeah. you're flying through it and they kind of simulate where these are located and like, oh, there'll be a weird gamer name over a thing and it'll flip by. And so you're starting, you're starting to see that population grow, but it really is such a great similarity to the actual universe in that it's so <laughs> infinite that your chances of ever running into somebody else's planet is, I don't know what the odds are. They probably published them, but they're astronomical. You probably never will. There's you also know? the um, multiverse issue. Are you guys aware of the multiverse in this game? No. What? Yeah. No? Yeah. What? Yeah, so when you get to the center of the universe, which I did, you get the choice of four different next steps for a multiverse to go through so like my guys in like cycle three or four or something like that and there's i think 255 cycles and then it cycles back to zero i don't know if they're still doing that i don't love it because i feel like i can't i feel like there's probably not a lot of people that know about the the sharding the multiversal sharding but i'm like in a different universe than the base i didn't know that galaxy can you yeah. travel back to those through the portals and stuff go back no. and forth? Uh, oh i think you've got to just get to the center again I, maybe by punching in the secret codes that you find to go through portals you can get places yeah yeah i think but, they, i yeah. think there's some portal key business that might let you do some of that stuff yeah, but, interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. There, there, there's also like 
there's also 255 galaxies. I just wanted to share that. Okay. Cause we've all played this game a lot, but if you haven't done the MSQ to the end, you will not have done your first jump. The thing is, I think when you do the MSQ, you kind of get a fast travel to the center of the universe because it is 600,000 light years, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. Right. In this one, there's no shortcuts from the from the main campaign quest, so you just got to manually jump to the center to get to the next oh my lord multiverse. Yeah. So it's taking a little longer. <laughs> Whenever I log in, I'm like, oh, I'm still 600,000 light years away from the center. Uh. I might I might actually log in with a creative account and do uh, or save and go check that ship builder out where everything's free just to put it through its paces. Yeah. I might do that. And then, and then it's not as robust as something like, um, Starfield, but the game is better. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, you trade one for the other. Well, so Starfield, I think has like a, um, it's just like, it's a, the shard is like, it's like what if decisions were different and things worked out different? Also this is the more multiverse, we- yeah. This is more just weird esoteric. Yeah. Like the different shard, some of them will have more verdant. I think there's like the three different colors of specials. Yeah, they give you a lot of options where it's like, hey, yeah. do you want more population? Do you want no... less population? Do you <laughs> want Listen, more green? Not... <laughs> do you want more hostility? Like it's you're, weird. You're... You're, yeah. you're not playing No Man's Sky for the story, okay? Right. And if whether no. no matter what you think about Starfield, it is a narrative based RPG, and that's not no sure. They're no Man's kinda... Sky has lore and a story, but it's not like yeah, mind blowing. It's just a new shard. Welcome. Here's some rocks. Like it's just. I was hoping you'd say, <laughs> "Oh, I'm in the new uh, reality, so all the ge- the only difference is all the Gek have beards or something." You know? Well, no. that's more that's more what Starfield does. Like Starfield does have an element of that, which yeah. is cool. Yeah. Um. Uh. But unfortunately, <laughs> it's a little tedious to see. Yeah. Um. But I got to get back in, in a couple there. years. We'll all play Starfield probably when, when they're new. When they get their big first major update, I'm gonna I'll be back in there to see what's up. When they get that, when they get a mod to get rid of that big circle on the HUD. Oh yeah, you don't like that circle, do you? <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fan of the circle. No. no. Take that like circle out, or let it, at least let Bo remove it from. The I'm UI. sure there's a there's probably a mod already for that. So yeah, it usually is for those things pretty quick. Uh, well, that's awesome. Uh, no Man's Sky still still a threat. Bo, let's talk about Star right. Starcraft Two co-op commanders. <laughs> well, I mean, I took the week off streaming, and I was like, what do I feel like playing, and what seems fun to me? And honestly, I've whenever I watch Starcraft esports, I need to start playing Starcraft. You know, it's just that's. That's how this shit goes. That's how real. Well, listen to me. Sorry, but uh-huh, that's, that's right. how real video, like that's how real influencing happens, right? Like you're watching an awesome esport, and you're like, shit, I want to play that awesome ass esport, and that's how I get into StarCraft. Mm. And back, so I'm watching GSL, and I'm like, man, these guys are awesome. I can't play that good, so no ladder for me. Not StarCraft, but Co-op Commanders is fun. So mm. I played a lot of Nova. I've got no- Nova prestiged four times over to the max now good lord um because you get different there's a different mod for each time you do it it's worth doing uh if you're into it anyways played a lot of co-op commanders um, wow you probably played more with nova than anyone would have with her full game that never got released you played more nova than any human being yeah basically. she does have um she does have her own mini expansion in starcraft 2 although i haven't played that yet oh interesting i do own it I should play it sometime. I spent the money oh, on it. I think I knew that. Um, that was old. That's older, right? That's been around. Their mission packs. Yeah, it came out after Legacy of the Void. Oh, There's okay. a, a three mission story thing that mm. she has. I don't know. I haven't played it yet. <laughs> I should play it. Mm. Um, but I was just playing. Co-op Commanders is, StarCraft 2 is fantastic. Co-op Commanders is fantastic. And that's I played a lot of that this week. That game was great because you could just um, buy it. Remember when you could just buy that game and it was great? And you just play it. I mean, it's still a good value. Stark. You can, you can just, I think it's free to play, but like when it goes on sale too, like you, I'm just like, you get so much game. For That's so great. It's a money. really good value. No, it's awesome. And it holds yeah. up all these years later. And, you know, hearing that thing about a sparkle horse and wow, making more money than all of Starcraft, uh, the first Starcraft game or Starcraft two's first Liberty thing. What was it called? Liberty, uh, yeah, Wings but no one, Wings of Liberty. I'll tell you, nobody gives a shit about that Sparkle Horse anymore, but people do give a shit about StarCraft 2. Johnny so. Awesome does. That's right. Johnny Awesome. Um, 
All right. So uh, yeah. Anyways, that's StarCraft Two. Yeah. I I, I so uh, they finally announced news for Phase Three of WoW Season of Discovery. As you know, I've been running the core guild there. It's a kind tyranny. <laughs> um, and f- so they just uh, well, you know, we've had. To, it's important. No, it is. I think it's very good. You're doing the right. Um, you're doing the Lord's work over there. I like but it. but it is um, phase three. They just like totally because uh, I was kind of thinking it'd be a little bit. Phase three comes up next Thursday. Jeez Louise! And the big Seems raid is really quick. Yeah. And there, we're swapping to twenty man raids with a one week lockout, which I'm kind of grateful for because I want to cut down my wow to one day or once a week if I'm raiding, which is perfect. Sunken Temple. I love Sunken Temple. Um. And I think we've been running two 10 man, so I think we have enough for the 20 man. But you know what? Uh, come join the, if you're into WoW Classic, come play with us. I'd rather have guildies from the show than randos wanting to parse or some other bullshit. Sure. So let's, let's play some World of Warcraft. Let's raid some Sunken Temple. Uh, we have, it, we're probably lowest on druids and shaman. We have tons of spellcasters and hunters. If you want to be not special, play those classes. We have lots of those already. Unless you're a warlock that tanks. Yeah. And, well, rogues kind of blow right now. I don't know if they're going to be better, but man, have got so, plenty of rogues. No, I don't play anymore. No. So the whole class. Well, John, you're it. still you're in the guild. and Ultimately, <laughs> you can play whatever you want, but people ask, what do you, what do you need? And, you know, we need... You need rogues? Uh, Rogue tanks? Druid, well, druids and shaman, we don't have a lot of in the guild for mm. for their raid ready. So there mm. you go. But yeah. um, I think like because we won't be do probably won't be running multiple runs as much if the raids are tougher with more people required. So I think we have the tanks covered. I play a tank, and our raid general centrifuge plays a healer. So we've got like the two. You know, we've got two there, and then we've got usually a second tank. We've got a couple of tanks, a rogue tank too, actually. Um, which is, it's interesting, and there's some interesting tools coming out. Uh, if you don't, <laughs> you know how there was that conversation at one point that, like, WoW has too many buttons? Yeah. Um, so they paired it back. Well, th- this season of Discovery is like, what if we did the f- reverse and give you double the buttons? <laughs> I'm glad, like, there's, there's so many runes now. And there's so much bullshit. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, Complete there's just reverse. so many buttons. The thing I remember, um, by it, the way, when you get in there, the thing I remember about Sunken Temple, the only thing I remember is, A, it was sunken. It was, like, below the water. And, yeah. two, they had the worst vine textures I've seen in a video game. So I'm wondering if they've changed that. This is classic after no, all. Probably it's classic not. and oh gosh, no, it's gonna look classic. But the boss fights will be updated, right? Like it has yeah. like modern ass mechanics, but uh, not so much the graphics. Well, yeah. although the weapon models look sick. Like this is the first phase where the weapon models actually look sick, and the enchant effects and all that are getting really sick looking. Like mm. stuff's getting. Shit's getting real for phase three. We're getting to level 50 now. We're almost at level 60. And the custom content is now looking pretty slick uh, for high level gear. Because, like, they don't want to give, like, the fanciest shit to a level 25 raid. I'm sorry. But, mm-hmm. like, a lot, of this, a lot of the stuff in there looked pretty derpy. But I saw some <laughs> previews of, like, what, what's coming out for this stuff. And it, it looks badass and cool. So, um I'm a big fan of classic WoW guys. Like I'm just, I really enjoy playing that mode. I, I didn't see this coming, but uh, they got anyways, you. I just wanted to put the call out. I don't want to talk too too much about it. Just that it's happening in a week. I'm like, oh, oh, I thought it would be in a couple more months. Like they want to make sure they juice. I think season of discovery before uh, the war within. Did you comes have you, out? Have you done any more of the plunder storm stuff or no? No, no. I mean. No. Like I, I enjoyed it on a technical level, but I hate battle royale, so it's not for me. Um, but but it felt good, like you know, it was it was, it was a competent mode and all that, but mm. not it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Anyways, if you guys change your mind and want to play some world, I know we've had a hundred times we've had this conversation, so I'm not trying to twist anyone's arm. I'm just saying, I didn't pee in this lake or shit in this lake. <laughs> <laughs> the water is warm and it's it's there's no feces in it so far so. okay i good. showed up just long enough to ensure that it was a horde guild yeah. and then i left great that's exactly <laughs> it te- technically if i w- i had a, a little bit of a sliver of hope you guys had played that's why we went horde but if you guys 
If you guys had just like shit on it from the jump, I might have made the guild. I didn't alliance. shit on it. I think season of discovery is great. I'm exactly. That's why I'm saying I made it horrid. That's why I'm like, well, I'd like to tempt them into joining, so I made it horrid. But if you guys were just if if you were just like no, I would have definitely gone alliance. I, I just know. want to make it crystal clear to any listeners out there, and I know there's at least one because I saw the comment in the chat <coughs> that's saying we have one. I wish <laughs> This was a horde guild. Yeah. I just want you to know it was me. I'm the one who said, I will not play this game with you if you don't make it horde. It has to be horde. And, I, and I don't play anymore. Yeah. It's John's it fault. Me. I was the villain all along. All of you Alliance core fans that are like, I wish I could play with them. I did this to you. Yeah. <laughs> and you seem happy about it. You seem kind of stoked. I am so happy about it. I yeah. like, I'm honestly giddy about it because <laughs> it makes Fine. me so happy. Cause I, I, even though I'm not even that involved in wow anymore, I still got my horde pride and it just makes me happy knowing I did it to y'all. I've played to lots of alliance. It's nice to play on a different side. It's fine. But you know, I'm yeah. just saying, sure. I get it. Just, just saying. Just, just saying. saying. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. cool. Season right. of Discovery. Still kicking ass. Yeah, uh, what's three next week? Uh, lastly, um, I was playing some Half-Life 2 VR. Oh, yeah. I'm really curious about this. And you didn't stream it. I got so. called out in court chat. Someone's like, this isn't, this isn't Bo play, isn't he? Mr. VR, where, where's the thing? Yeah. Uh, where, where's he, him playing VR? He must be dead. And I was like, well, it's not dead. I'm just like. I'm having schedule problems, guys. Like, wow, is kind of a time suck. And then when you're like, oh, I got to play all these other games. You know what I mean? And then it's yeah. just like, I was like, yeah, what about good old VR? We've forgotten about VR. So I logged in to some Half-Life 2 VR mod and played that. I don't really have much to say other than I played it and I enjoyed myself. <laughs> the gravity gun feels great. Um, and, you know, we've talked about it before at length. So I played that as well this week. That's awesome. Most of my time was in StarCraft 2, though, if I'm being honest. I barely played WoW. Yeah. And, um, I, and yeah. Did you, did you kind of, did you enjoy your kind of stream free time? Like, I, I think that's good for people once in a while. It's just like get away from I mean, everybody's it, eyeballs and just play, you know? It's also like a video game free. So I think like part of it was the Dragon's Dogma stuff, like really like, um, I don't know. It just got to me. I, I just I think I play video games every day, and, but also a little bit. It was. It's just feeling like like I've stopped working, so I'm like I should have more time for this stuff, and it feels like I have less time, and I'm I don't know how, and I'm trying to f evaluate what's going on with my streaming schedule. Part of it is playing WoW twice a week. Yeah, that's a huge chunk. I, I do I do I do some contract work on Mond Mondays and Wednesdays, mm -hmm. so. Monday's contract work, Tuesday's wow. Even though it's not all day, it's wow in the evening. Wednesday's contract work. Uh, Saturday's all day wow. Sunday I play Baldur's Gate 3, the slowest Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer game <laughs> in the entire galaxy. And I'm like, well, no wonder like, I'm like not getting a lot done because like my dance card is like really full with just like these very small amount of activities that when I'm doing these things, I'm like, well, now it's time to sit down and play FF7 Rebirth. And I'm like, oh, I'm a little tuckered out from playing video games. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, it's like, so I'm trying, part of it was the Dragon's Dogma thing, but the part of the thing was reevaluating like best use of time. Um, it's, I didn't, most of the time when I say like, oh, let's get the core community playing a game together, like Pal World, like I get two people on the server. Mm hmm. Uh, but there's like you know 500 characters in the, in the classic WoW game. I kind of created a monster a little bit, right? I'm not trying to abandon it, but at the same time, you know, there's a reason we're, when it comes to MMOs, like we have to bail on them. It's that we have to spend time doing other things. So that's why I said I'm glad maybe Sunken Temple will be a once a week kind of raid thing, and that'll be more manageable time wise. Mm -hmm. Because the the people, you know, everyone's very like uh, MMO people, not just WoW. Any MMO, if they like you, you're a content creator, and they see you enjoying the game, they want you to enjoy the game 
forever. Mm-hmm. You know, like look at uh, Kyle and Garrett. They barely have time to play any other games. They're playing Final Fantasy uh, 11 <laughs> all the time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, 14, it, it, yeah. it was 14. Or yeah. 14. Yeah. Um, it was so shocking to see Garrett and Helldivers. <laughs> like, when I'm playing, I'm like, oh, you play other games? That's crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know they do because they do the Grinding Gear show, but you know what I mean? Like, a lot of what I see from them is that game, and I bet you, you know, I bet you they it eats up a good portion of their time. So I guarantee I, it wow, does. I'm definitely feeling that with wow right now. And yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm not a hundred percent comfortable, but I also don't want to like turn my back on it completely either. But you know, so if I could lock Yoshi P in a room, this is a side note. Yeah. Lock him in a room and say, I'm not letting you out Yoshi P until you tell me why the hardest boss in your MMO is the account management website. And when you tell me that and explain to me why that's still the way it is after all these years, then you can come out of this room. That's what I would do. just tell you it's not his department. He knows. He knows. He's talked so about bad. it. It's not, it's not a secret. Well, whose did job is it over his, there? Cause... Did you all hear the announcement for um, for when Don Trail is coming out? Uh, did you, oh, did you hear I what did. He said about I didn't that? hear what he said. No, I just heard this stuff about the date. So and... he came out and he, he gave the release date for Don Trail. And then he gave what early access would be because yeah. you get a if you pre-order you get a couple days early head start, and then he said we were gonna do a week earlier, which is when the Elden Ring DLC comes out. And he goes, but I think you all want to play the Elden Ring DLC, <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a week. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I do really <laughs> like him. He just needs to walk across the hall to the web people and the accounts people and fix that shit. It's terrible. Terrible. You can well, li- I had to I had to deal with it yeah, crazy cuz I wanted to get their uh you know pre-ordering games. We're against it, but let me tell you about more games I pre-ordered. Um I wanted to get the collector's edition for the new expansion. Um and Man, their website was not ready for the traffic to be buying that game. Mm. Uh, it was a crazy experience, and I, I was shocked. <laughs> it was like buying BlizzCon tickets again. It was, it was a weird, weird uh, throwback to like, oh yeah, I remember when getting BlizzCon tickets was this challenging and difficult. Uh, wow, that's crazy. But I got one. Nice. So uh, I am excited about that, and. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for that game. It's three months away. You guys think three the... months away, and then every time you ask me what I've been playing, <laughs> the answer is going to be Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, we can all look forward. We can to just that look again. forward to it. Uh, do you do you think? Um, so just speaking of BlizzCon, real quick, with everything that happened with the layoffs and just that whole thing, is uh-huh. there a BlizzCon this year? Probably not. They would have announced it by now. I feel I like. I feel like we would have heard about it. I don't know that. Was there one last year? I don't yeah. know yeah. that they're... Yeah. I think the last one went really well. It like, did, but it like, was right before I would before consider all the last that. BlizzCon uh, a rare Blizzard win. Yeah, no, it totally um, was. But the problem so, with it was is yeah. it, came, it happened right before the acquisition got finalized. That happened. Then everybody... All these firings happened. I feel like that, that all got soured. Yeah. I yeah. think people were a lot more sour about the controversy, and they still managed to, you know, like the... We'd be I, hearing I, about it soon. Though, I right? think yeah. if I was going to predict, I would predict that maybe there isn't one this year, but maybe we get one next year. I don't know. I, I guess it all comes down to if they have something to show. I think Blizzard has maybe finally learned that if they don't have anything to show, they maybe shouldn't do a show. Mm. Uh, they wait, just shelved yeah, their survival on. game. Mm-hmm. We got to remember the Overwatch timeline, right? Because when did the band-aid came off after blizzcon right uh what the pve stuff yeah yeah that was it they waited till the end of that yeah that was after blizzcon absolutely yeah that was not just that oh yeah and then not it was not before blizzcon because i don't think now that you say the band-aid ripping was 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 after well they just did it again because now they've said well, I know I they, like, they have. A, I was like, did I go month, back in like... time because all of a sudden there was news again of like Overwatch cancels PVE, and I was like, no shit, they did that like months ago. But no, it's because they have now canceled 
the little bit of PVE that they were yeah, yeah. still they promising was going to happen. They, they stamped <laughs> they out the embers. Did it again. Yeah, yeah. They, they, but they, 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 Tracer said the world can always use more heroes in the moment in their direst need, and Blizzard came down and stepped on Tracer and squashed her like a bug. That's yep. that's what happened. Just pop that backpack right off her. Yeah. 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 Poor girl. I Bunch mean, chat memes. says, guys, the battle within comes out this year. Of course, there will be a BlizzCon. I just, mm. it does seem. Oh yeah, the well, war within. I don't know. Yeah. They. I feel like we've been saying. Well, they had a really uh, season of discovery was was goaded. No, they're having some moments. The... They're having some moments. There's no question about that. So I've been back wow, and forth. Especially. Yeah, I've like, been vacillating. Yeah, if you'd asked me after those layoffs, I would have said, "Ooh, probably not," because people are pissed. And then eh, they're going to do it anyway. They got to do it. They got to do it. I they still might do stand it. by it hinges on whether or not they have something to show. And if the, 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 if the uh, WoW expansion is this year, then they pretty much have something to show, right? They'll at the very least have whatever it is they're planning for end of year for Season of Discovery. Because by the time there is a BlizzCon, assuming it's in fall, we'll have gotten level 60 content. But winter, there's planned new content of some kind. Uh, end game like maybe brand new raids never seen before that's been the speculation so if there was a time to announce something for classic plus it would be then yeah Yeah. i don't know and you know the war within remember the cadence of releases is supposed to be quicker so the war within comes out that one year clock ticks down for the next chapter of the world soul saga so that's something else to show at BlizzCon. All right, well. let's just lock ourselves in so we can have rights and wrongs. Yes or no, Scott, BlizzCon this year. I don't know. You guys are kind of convincing me. No, that you it can't. Might I don't know. You got to pick. Yes or no. Uh, I'll say yes. Yes. And also Diablo 4, uh, green. <laughs> the green stuff <laughs> oh new expansion yeah oh yeah. right diablo 4 green edition i got you <laughs> diablo 4 some green shit is happening so like that <laughs> yeah yeah i forgot oh, about that man, i forgot about that yeah, you so... know what actually i was gonna say no just because i like being right when no one else is yeah but i don't know if i i don't know if i feel it in my heart yeah and then they've got to give us some hope. They're definitely going to talk about a new hero for Overwatch 2. There's definitely going to be that's going to be a rough spot on the show, but they definitely they they're working on new heroes, so they're not going to fully pull the plug. They're going to give us something that people are probably going to trash. Yeah. Um for the PvE. And uh the rest of it is just who knows. There's no new survival game. I'm very skeptical 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 <laughs> uh, of of any StarCraft, definitely no heroes. They hate that game. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, so it might just be those, and that might be enough. Remember all right, that? I guess yeah. we're all yeses. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be contrarian because if I, as much as I would be like, oh, oh I was right, I didn't feel it in my heart. There'll be like Hearthstone stuff for sure. There's always new Hearthstone stuff. Yeah, but no, that's the most boring stage shit ever right now. It's so boring well, for like. For, uh, me, for me, for <laughs> me, yes. But there are people who like that game. No, I know they're there are, but that. is it a thing you want to do? Big stage thing? I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, the, well, they put yeah, musical number. We got cards. We got cards. Do you want to open packs? And I'm a troll with a pipe, and I got packs for everyone. Like that's they always do one of those, right? So I have do a, one of those. I have a feeling that'll be lessened a bit. I don't know. And I don't mean like heroes lessened, <laughs> right? No, no, Where no, they just ignore have, it. They'll have, yeah, they they they'll have something. You yeah. know, uh, they just it's Overwatch, and Overwatch will have a hero. We we'll get we'll get some Overwatch. It'll be disappointing, but they're still gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're honest about it. No wonder they don't yeah, invite yeah. me to BlizzCon anymore. We're, we're talking so much smack about what you got your green oh. expansion. Yeah, you got I your got uh, Diablo green. <laughs> I look, guess. It's my. St- it's our style. Well, maybe no, it's, it's fine. Yeah. It those look that old guard is gone. It doesn't even work the way it used to, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they should, yeah. they should, they should get all three of us to do the Q and A. Yeah, let's do the Q and A. I would love that, all right? three of us. John and I can be microphone holders. They yeah, they, we're they, really they, good at it. If they if if they ask a question, <laughs> we might say like, "You sure that's the question you want to ask before?" <laughs> 
They quit yeah, doing we'll Q and A though. They're done. <laughs> they don't didn't do it last time either. They're, they well, they don't want to do that. They don't have us because we they can don't be have like, professional actually... <laughs> microphone holders. Like, yeah. We can. Ha- Bo and I have done this for conventions before. Sure. We can. Yes, we have practiced this at uh, Dirt Tech. I've literally done it at the at BlizzCon. I've done the Q and A. I'm just telling yeah, you. Yeah, but you got to be the man on the stage now. You've, yeah, you're, you're the man on the stage. We're for microphone that holders. We don't have experience with man on oh, the no, stage. Oh, no, I want all three of us up there, like on three stools. No, no, it's going to be you and Chris. Just, 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 it's just you and Chris. And if maybe Bo, some other people. If Bo does a lake run, that would be a fourth stool. No, no, I will take a shit before <laughs> the Q&A so I don't have to do it during the Q&A. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but... If, uh, in the fountain. <laughs> all right. If they if they do this, we'll go. We'll all go. It'll be great. Let's do it, Blizzard. What is a fountain if not a giant bidet? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, but, you're not wrong. I hate to say it, but that's kind of true. But no, no. Like we can be microphone holders, and that way, if somebody's going to ask something really crappy, we'll like make fun of them. All right. I'm in. Instead of <laughs> yeah, we'll intimidate in, them with in, our wit. <laughs> yeah, instead of you know, we won't we won't have any other uh, any phones moment. Do you guys not have phone? Well, I can't promise that. That's no, you can't promise stage, that. But... <laughs> no, yeah. I definitely can't because I would probably secretly encourage it. Yeah, uh, you'd want red shirt guy to come. But up. it's Chris. Chris is up there. He's he's he, he won't. I wouldn't want nobody would be mistake. intentionally mean to Chris. Red shirt guy was directly at Chris. He was saying he didn't remember his lore, which was true. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's not like fair to Chris. Chris put his that's foot a lot of mouth. lore to remember. Oh, it's funny. not like he putting his foot. It's not memed the way those other ones right. are memed on. Like, it's a very uh, different. You thing. think you do, but you don't. And do you guys not have cell phones? Right. Like those were gnarly. His were more positive yeah. for sure. Here's the yeah. funny thing, though. I'm glad you guys brought this up. So the other day, I find this TikTok video where this guy is is showing his huge Warhammer painted figure collection, Warhammer 40k. Just I've never seen anything like it. This whole basement covered in Warhammer 40k figures, just everything from mechs down to little orcs and all the Space Marines, all of it. It's just huge. And he's showing all this stuff. I'm like, oh, I gotta download this and show this. So I download it. I text it to Chris. I go, dude, what do you think of this? Because he does this. He loves painting and he plays games. He loves wargaming. And he wrote back, it's a start. That's all. Yeah. I <laughs> I thought that was some serious right. smack, man. Man, and then sunglasses fell down over his face and he walked away in the room. Bad, 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 bad. They start playing the music. It was amazing. Um, well, anyway. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back from this break, we're going to dive directly into some additional news quick summary of some phil spencer stuff that i thought was interesting nothing too crazy a few other things as well so stick around we'll be right back back uh we're back everybody we're back Woo! hooray congratulations try not, try not to burp on the microphone i ate a thing on my way down here and i'm very burpy now <laughs> it sounds like pac-man <laughs> yeah a little bit Whew. Uh, hey, we're back, you guys. We got to uh, talk yes, about this a uh, little bit of extra news that we didn't cover yet, so we're going to do that now. If I can find the damn button for it, here it is right here. Uh, spill, uh, spill, s- spill Fencer. <laughs> spill. Phil Spencer, rather, is how you say his name. Uh, sat down with a uh, dude over there, Chris Plant, over at uh, Polygon to talk about the recent layoffs, the current state of the industry, all that kind of stuff. And... Uh, they talked about some interesting things. I just wanted to bring out a couple things. They talked about how video games used to work. You set a sales goal. You set an earnest goal. Set the price of the game. Set the budget. Make your game. Sells well. You do good. How it works now. Sales are spread across multiple platforms with variables, uh, including discounts and subscription services with varying revenue models. It's kind of a mess. So it's kind of boring, but it's also kind of an interesting business aspect to how games are marketed, sold, and uh and obtained today versus the way they were even just 10 years ago. Um, He says there are three main problems. Cost, reducing risk-taking. New games have to sell millions of units to justify cost, many millions of units. He mentioned that AAA games are in the $200,000 to $300,000 or a million-dollar budget range these days, Um, which I wanted to make a note here that this guy, a lot of this reminded me of John's point about make some middleware, not middleware, but B-tier games. It doesn't have to be all... Triple A, there can be some small stuff in here. Um, like Devolver basically does. Kind of, yeah. I mean, they're a little more on the indie side, but something closer to that. And uh, he didn't really get into that, but I, I do think that's 
I think they have a lot of that in their in their upcoming uh, release schedule from all these devs they bought. It's not all AAA top and you know best in class games. There's some like middling things in there, and I don't mean middling quality wise. I'd say that uh, what was the radio one, the the or the rhythm one that they just now put on PlayStation, uh, Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush. That's that's Lo-Fi a great Rush. example of a game that is not. It's not meant to be the next Red Dead Redemption, and it's not meant to be some crappy little indie. Crappy's not the right word. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a lot of good indie mm. games, and of all of us, Scott, you liked them the most. Yeah, I sh- I, it's the totally wrong way of saying that. The way It I said just it. means uh, humble. Little humble indie game, yeah. Somewhere, Whereas this is like you know, somewhere else. This is in the middle someplace, and they were very limited successful. Limited scope. So they should do more of that. But anyway... Says exclusivity limits the revenue potential, uh, reducing motivation for excess or exclusives. And then on console stagnation, says console players are upgrading, but new console players aren't entering the market. So they're seeing like you know, I don't know. Uh, I have a PS5. When the PS5 Pro comes out, will I buy that? Probably, maybe. I don't know. Could be, but they they don't expect. Well, PS5, PS5 is not a good example. But they're not. It's seeing not like a lot of when the Wii came out. Right. And all of a sudden, an entire audience that wasn't buying video game consoles bought video game consoles. Great, great example. Yes, that is no longer a thing um, for any of these devices. Like all three of the the big names are all having. They're all. That was the other point of this conversation. It was a little bit more like, yeah, this is what Microsoft's facing, but so is everybody else. Like, you know, let's not paint a picture that doesn't exist. Everybody is looking down the barrel of a weird new trend in the in the future of gaming and things are expected to shrink and they're expected to change and all this stuff um they asked him or see asked if the activision blizzard king layoffs were the result of those costs or unique to xbox businesses spencer said it was a little bit of both and that quote the thing that has me most concerned for the industry is the lack of growth unquote um i don't know that just tells me maybe you shouldn't have growth as your chief uh metric anymore but that's like me saying maybe consider the fact that the growth that you experienced prior was because of a pandemic which was a blip hopefully that's not to be repeated and that you can't bank and build your business around it as a model yeah well said that's exactly it Um, like i i think that's a bit of a like phil spencer's thoughts on cost the you know new games have to sell millions of units to justify costs huge problem with the industry it's why i always say that there's a triple a bubble that's going to burst yeah like i think he's spot on there i think this answer is kind of a sidestep of like oh it was just a surprising lack of growth well there wasn't there was a huge boon of growth that was built around the pandemic that artificially changed what the numbers look like for video games and the video game industry. And everybody built up and built around those numbers, even though anybody with half a brain would have told you that it was temporary. And now the industry is suffering because of it. And I think his boots need to be held a little more to the fire for that because that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Yep, and I agree. Now, some of it, like Microsoft didn't own these businesses at the time that all that happened. It's not like Phil Spencer is responsible for up hiring during the pandemic and a big boom. He didn't do that. But at least own up to what the situation is. Everybody grew super big during that and then went, oh, whoops. Turns out a pandemic doesn't last forever and now it's going the other way. Now we got to fire a bunch of people. Yeah. And it also, it, it spreads, you know, it's other industries as well. Gaming, streaming, movie studios, like everybody except for theaters had a boom. And now they're all like, Oh, what the big draw? Why are we, why is it all pulling back? Well, cause it's obvious you had a boom. Now you're not. And now you got to compensate for it. And in a world where you promise your shareholders, constant growth, that blip is bad. So anyway, uh, he also went on to talk about how their research is showing Gen Z. So your 25s and unders ish zone there. Uh, they're not bound to the traditional video game console model. They want the games regardless of the platform they're on. So for Xbox, our brand pivot uh, is Xbox is a great place to find the games I want to, which is a little brand markety. But I also think there's some truth in there. You know, people want them. I mean, I think the PC market has grown, but also they do want shit on their phones. They want experiences that maybe previous generations wanted or didn't want or whatever. Like it's just changing. And I don't think they have their hand around what that generation actually wants out of gaming. 
because they're also distracted by a million other things that we weren't when we came up. Like I would, you know, if I could have played video games all through the 80s and 90s nonstop, I would. I didn't have social media to distract me. I didn't have a million other things, streaming services and other stuff. So they're competing with that too. So anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting. I, I'll say this overall though. This is my biggest takeaway. Most of it is just, you know, business speak and a few interesting insights. But for me, the big takeaway here is I wish Sony, Nintendo, and everybody would be a little more out there about this stuff and just talk about it. Like you never hear Sony talk about any of this shit. You never hear Nintendo say, talk about this at all. And they don't have to. I just like, I would like it if they did, you know, just yeah. be more yeah, transparent. Whether I agree with the things he says or not, I, I think it's cool that somebody's talking about it. Yeah. Like, willing to, cause he doesn't and, and have to. And that shows to. my biases. That's why I think, you know, the interviews you do with uh, Greg street are interesting because um, I think it is interesting to get that perspective. I totally understand people that go, I don't want to see, I don't want to talk about a video game until there's gameplay which is certainly how a lot of people are going to feel about it. Like, I'm going to wait until you have something to show me instead of words. Yeah. But I e even, like, let's just say their project fell through tomorrow. I think the discussion around how to build a game and how developers think about a video game is interesting, regardless of what the outcome is, ultimately. Yeah. So I, I'm always excited when people are sharing their thoughts and experiences again, whether you agree with them or not. Right. Ooh, Bo, getting a deep breath on you now. Mm. Oh, well, am I breathing into the mic again? <laughs> that one was sensual. Yeah, that one had that had kind of like a bad word. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now we need right, a Bo ASMR or... <laughs> video. We need Scott doing Wololo, and we need a Bo ASMR that is just Bo breathing into the microphone. Oh, Sorry. What are you going to do, no, though, I, John? I, 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 I need to put please, a monitor on. Please, can we do it? Because I just want to know how well it does. Yeah. Five hours. You don't even have to record it for five hours. We can loop a small section. Five hours of you breathing into the microphone. Let's put it on YouTube and just see what happens. Yeah, it'll be a great time for everyone I involved. I just want to know. I just need to know for science. Yeah, I'm sure that's all it is, and you don't actually want to see the, the, the train wreck that is this experiment. No, it is. I just want to know how many people would watch it. I just want to know the analytics on it. All right. That's it. Okay. It, not, all right. That's all. You just want to see what happens. Want to see what that video if does. Anybody, I will record this video, but I have an obnoxious voice <laughs> and uh, nobody has identified anything that I need to do for hours. I will record the ASMR video that you two have not done yet. Yeah. Somebody just needs to tell me what they want seven and a half hours of me doing. What if they this say is... uh, rubbing your feet with chili or something? Weird Nobody like that. wants that. Well, I don't Probably want that. your feet would chill. I just saw, I just saw an episode of uh, King of the Hill where Peggy got tricked into doing foot fetish videos, and she thought it was because she had big feet, and it was to help other women who struggle with having too big a feet. But really, the guy was like, "All right, I want you to walk through some mud, and then uh, you're gonna walk through some chili because I think chili was one of them." So that's why I thought of it. That's my point. That's why I brought that up. I'm not thinking about that all the time. That was an episode of a cartoon. <laughs> um, all right, what else? Uh, oh, Stardew Valley. I think we talked about it last week, but it is doing very well in 1.6. Uh, that guy is living the dream. I guess make something rad with your bare hands, and it'll pay off for you. So congratulations to him and the success it's currently having. Uh, Take Two now owns Gearbox for a steal, $460 million. Uh, they were liquidated by uh, Embracer Group. They paid 1.5 or so billion for them in the first place, so um, got rid of them at a steal. Um, it's uh, not doesn't make them independent. They're now going to be own, or no, they will be independent. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm mixing up two stories. Take Two will now own Gearbox. So next time you buy uh, the reportedly already under development uh, Borderlands game, it'll have a Take Two uh, label on the box or logo. Very exciting. And uh, Relic, you know Relic, the Homeworld people, and uh, the, they did the, the Party of Men or whatever the World War II RTS is called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that describes World War II to a T. What was World War II like, Granddad? It was a party, it was of, a party men. of men. 
Uh, Company of Heroes. I couldn't think of the name name of the thing. <laughs> Party of Men. The Party of Men. <laughs> this is a great uh, title. This the, is a great badly. They're yeah. but they're a revered dev, and they are now independent again. They parted ways with Sega. It's a little like the Bungie Microsoft split. It's amicable. It's not like a weird, you know, crazy firing or anything weird like that. They wanted to be on their own again. Now they are. So. Uh, Relic will go and make things that won't have a little Sega logo at the top anymore. So there's that. And then finally, Diablo 4 is on Game Pass today for those who celebrate. All right? So if you've been waiting... Congratulations. Yep. And get in there before Diablo Green comes out. Yep, because that'll get char... I don't know how they'll handle that. I wonder if they'll just... Hmm. How does Game Pass do that now with a expansion to a game because that's a full-blown expansion retail. my understanding is diablo green still has the same starters but you can only get um uh certain uh demons in diablo green version <laughs> only certain demons you have to trade with friends if you want others what if i buy horse armor can i get can i get any be benefit from that like buy a horse but yeah skin? but you still gotta trade if you want um, oh shit all right if you want a tauros I think it depends mm -hmm. how they do uh, the expansion content because a lot of the times you have to pay extra for the expansions. Like the Game Pass game is usually the yeah. base game. Yeah, that's true. DLC is always more, and I don't know if this is considered that. Maybe it will be. This is kind of new territory for them. Oh, side note, Game Pass Xbox, just you play it. Game Pass PC, you have to install. If you never have, I assume people mostly have it, but if you'll need to install uh, Battle.net. For it to work. Oh, interesting. I was curious about that. I was thinking that while you were saying it was, how does it work with Battle.net? Because that might be telling yeah. for our future. For, for now, there, you have to authenticate that way. Um, I would think in the future that will change, because why would they want yeah, that extra? It seems hoop? weird. Yeah. Like, please download this client so that you can download this client so that you can play this game. I mean, it's basically what Ubisoft makes you do and it's what EA used to make you do or still does in some it's ways. It's happening with Riot because there's a weird interaction with my Xbox app and the Riot app. Yeah, to play the Riot like, games, yeah. To play, even to have them, like if I have the Riot one open, it's like trying to open the Xbox one. And I'm like, yeah. why? It's a weird PC thing. They don't, console doesn't matter. All that stuff runs without worrying about it. I don't, I don't. I don't know why, whose idea this is, but... Their original purpose was to be separate. Now they're trying to act like they work together, and that's yeah. what we get. I don't like it. Uh, that's it for your extra news. Let's do some correspondence. That's a good question. We got a email here. Both hey, for you, mostly. Buckle up, everybody. Yeah, if buckle you've up. you've got sensitive listeners at home, we are going to get uh, not blue. We're going to get scientific. We're going to get topic, medical. Yeah. But we're going to be talking about oh. body parts and body functionality. That's right. Oh, no. I and just this is, read the first sentence. Yeah, and this know. is based on a, a comment Bo made not too many episodes ago about man juice. All right. Mm -hmm. Take that for what you will. <laughs> Uh, go back and listen if you missed I it. But anyway, a comment about man juice. You did. This isn't a Scott thing. <laughs> this was totally you. Well, one day there'll be a uh, a mashup to prove it, but uh, today is not that it's day. My, it's my party of men. <laughs> <laughs> it's party it's your party of men. of men. Come mania is happening early today. Yep. Let's get out right. the email. Yeah, it'll be Russia one day, but not today. All right. Today howdy, it's come mania. Mania. today it's come mania. Uh, howdy, Bo, John, and Scott. The latest John centric mashup led to a discussion on man juice, as Bo so elegantly put it. Correct, Bo did say it. I thought I'd chime in and clarify some things. Sperm is actually a common used shorthand for spermatozoan, uh, or sper spermatozoa, some people say. A single cell, or how would you say this? Game to sight. Game, 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 gamma to sight. Gamma anyway. toss it. Gamma toss it. I... <laughs> gamma toss it. I'm hungry. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, he says the testes in the scrotum is where the spermatozoa initially form, but they don't uh, mature until they reach the in, uh, sorry epididymis, uh, an S-shaped organ that wraps around the testes. All right, so this is down in your little nut area there, what we're saying. The vast uh, deference. Thank you for clearing <laughs> that. The best part was going like this. This There's is in your much. nuts. Yeah, your nuts. Uh, the vast... This definitely means nuts to everybody. Oh, yeah. Every, this is a universal sign for nuts. 
When the aliens come, just go like this. Nut massage. Yeah, nut massage. You'll be like, you can probe whatever you want, but don't touch my nuts. Don't do it. understand? It says the vast deferens, a.k.a. the ductus deferens, is next and communicates spermatozoa from the scrotum into the pelvic cavity just below the urinary bladder. There is no juice yet, he says. Ductus deferens is my next Baldur's Gate character. (laughs) Is it like... Is it like sardines moving through a tube if there's no juice? <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> this is worse because he didn't get into that. I don't know what to make of where that is. There's no now. juice. And I'm like, well, how does it move around? Does it ever get stuck? Oh, this is killing me. All right. So then it says, um, no juice yet. Here, the seminal vesticles, prostate and bulbothereal glands. Uh, I all that like, Pokemon, I, but I, it was not my favorite. <laughs> Wait, no, I don't think it's a Pokemon. Isn't that that actor's name who was uh, the Punisher? <laughs> which way? What? Which, oh, Wait. John Barenthal? Is that your thing? <laughs> <laughs> John Bulba the Therial. No? Okay. Uh, he was really okay. good on Walking Dead. All right. Yeah. All secrete different Stupid parts shame. of the seminal fluids that support the spermatozoa's needs. Seminal fluid, a.k.a. the liquid, plus spermatozoa the cells, equals semen, a.k.a. these words I'm not going to read. Hope Come that helps you. clarify some of the mysteries of man juice. I f- uh, feel free to follow up with any more questions. Dr. J, your friendly neighborhood atomat- atomist? A not a- An- Anatomist. Anatomist. <laughs> Anatomist. From Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, um, I don't know Automatist. if we, is Dr. Oh, he does. Is Dr. Tolbert still in the chat? Can he confirm? Because uh, he could confirm all this too. He, he knows these things. <laughs> yeah, we need to peer review this email. <laughs> so he says, yup, this is all yep. correct. Peer reviewed peer science. Reviewed. Yeah. Put a check mark on it. We got a yup right. from Dr. Tolbert. So That's John, cool. so Bo, did that help? clarify or are you more conf- i mean i'm now i'm thinking about well wait what about the your what did you say like sardines through a tube or whatever the like f- sardines said? through a tube right like there's no man juice yet so it's like it's making the spermatozoa yeah uh, and they don't uh you know so they're going through this factory system right but it's <laughs> tubes like how does it move is it like muscle is it like poo like i don't know like <laughs> like I'm going to die. Move around with a bit of lubricant. I'm going to die. Is it like poo? No, it's not like poo. Dr. Tolbert, what is it like? Well, it's poo's juicy, so to definitely get that it moves around. So It's not like poo, he says. Oh, I never thought of it before. Now I don't want to think about it. Tell so us the, more about the ductus deferens. Uh, I mean, that's definitely the, the part we're interested. In. I think like the the juice part is like definitely like there's a sterilization aspect to it. It keeps probably the stuff safe. You know. Yeah, it's a good. It's not really a lubricant, although it can act that way. Sure, but you're but you're but, right. Yeah, like it's a and this is all. Look, everybody out there snickering. It's a it's a nice it's a good scientific little. It's just you know you know like at the to, when you're trying to get the last of the toothpaste out you know is it like that the way it pushes it through? Like, like, yeah, I mean I don't know. I don't want to think great. about it. I feel like I learned this 20 years ago in biology somehow. I am Ductus Deferens Sigma. It sounds like one of those guys. It's like yeah. a Warhammer, uh, not 40k Warhammer person. Ductus Deferens. D- Ductus Deferens. Uh, he was great in the Mad Max movie. Oh, he's incredible. Yeah, I can't wait for the the sequel when we'll get. Um, hold on, what was the other word I didn't like in here? Bulbethereal glands when he takes over the the wastelands. That'll be trouble. John Th- Barenthal's brother. All right. Anyway, thank you, Doctor T or J from uh, Tulsa. Yeah, thank you. That's a good lesson. I don't know why I said T. Um, here's a quick text. Hi, core crew. You guys have done a lot in coverage of co-op games recently, and I have to uh, to scratch you a question. It's interesting. I'm curious well, yeah, if that's aimed at Bo because yeah. he doesn't like ask you a question. Oh, that's right. You don't like ask you a question. I forgot about that whole debate. Well, oh, hang on. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I was like, I'm con- getting misrepresented. This yeah. is how controversy gets started. I make. <laughs> I'm just saying it's weird how we ask a question. It's not that I don't like it per se. Yeah. Well, ask I, all the questions you want. Yeah. So he's going to scratch you a question. If he says, I'm curious if you've heard of played up. I actually own played up. Uh, it is, I think I talked about it on the show. It's a roguelike overcooked with way less relationship damage that has me absolutely hooked. And I would love to see you guys play it on Tuesdays to see if you will feel the same way. Love all that you do and wish you many more years of success. P.S. I will gladly gift keys since I know there are three hosts on this show. Oh, hey, oh, look at that. Shit. Well, I bought it forever ago and then it was for to play with my kids and we never did. Um, I think I have it on Steam. Let me make sure I even have it where I want it. But anyway, 
um, yeah, that's okay. a really cool. Overwhelmingly positive. Damn. It's like cool, it. and it's way less. He's right. It's way less like anger-inducing for the people that's you're playing good, with. Because yeah. the other game, like it's there are still bad feelings about that. Yeah, it's gnarly. I'm um, looking at it now. Yeah, I do own it on Steam, so we could totally play this. In fact. We don't even have anything picked for Tuesday, so we could play. We could play this if uh, if he's serious. So if you really want to do those codes, reach out uh, on our Discord or something. Find me. Um, I'll reply to this text and, and tell you. But but yeah, we'd love to play it. And uh, I've already got one, so you only need two codes. Bing. All right, that's a pretty good deal. Oh, look at it. You right. can. Thank you. Look at look at these old guys running around taking plates. This looks like a blast. I still haven't played it. So overwhelmingly positive. Bo, you're right. Look at that. 95%. Great, Scott. Good Lord. All right. Also, it sold Man, well. No Seems DLC. Like of... What's going wrong with these guys? They must be losing money. I mean, I don't know. They seem to be doing all right. I mean, if Capcom can't make it, why sh Why is it's happening? That's the name of the developer. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. I kind of like that. Well, it's happening. Yeah, I kind of like it. in the hole. Yeah. Um, all right, that's it for that. Thank you for that text, 801 471 You can also email us like Dr. J did at uh, talktothecore at gmail.com. Uh, we're doing a giveaway today, guys. This is exciting. I'm going to play nice. a little music here oh, to get us going. Uh, on the show, we're doing a giveaway? Yeah, watch this. All right, so we're not going to give it away on the show, oh. but we're going to start the giveaway, and then we will give it away on the show next Thursday. Oh, okay. Well, Sweet. I'm back okay. in. Yeah, yeah, now you're back in, nice. right? Uh, so I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys about it, but uh, working with our, <laughs> our pals over at Doghouse Systems, they are giving away a, a Mobius gaming laptop. These are really nice gaming laptops that they sell over there. And uh, not only is Doghouse Systems awesome, they're going to uh, facilitate most of the work here. All we have to do is really announce it. So here's what you have Incredible. to do. I have the rules right here. One moment. Uh, i got to pull up this PDF, make sure I don't screw it up. <laughs> um, if you like listening to our show, I know a lot of you do, and you want to win this gaming laptop. I mean, even if you don't like listening to our show, but you want to win a gaming laptop. Right. No, if you don't like listening to our show, go away. Save the laptop for someone who likes it. Yeah, like me. I'll give a laptop to hate listeners. I, mean, I will. Would if you? If you don't like the show and you win, it came from me. Well... <laughs> oh, I should mention U.S. and Canada only. No, uh, no other foreign soil. But Canada and U.S. anywhere oh, in those two things, you're good. All right. It's very expensive to ship this stuff to Europe or whatever. So U.S. and Canada only. Uh, if you love listening to the show, you want to win this thing. Here's what you do. Uh, you head on over to either their Twitter account or their Facebook account, and you like their uh, or follow their account, right? And then you just give them a quick reply telling them what you like about the show. It's really that simple. And I'll give you the names. Where did I put them? There they are. Doghouse Systems on Twitter slash X is just Doghouse Systems. It is the same exact name on Facebook. So it's real easy. Uh, so whichever poison you pick, uh, whether you're on Facebook or X slash Twitter, go to Doghouse Systems and give them a like. Uh, or it doesn't have to be a like. Just follow them. Do a reply that says, this is why I like Core. They're going to have a post up for uh, for this whole thing on both these places, so it's not going to be hard for you to find it. And uh, you'll be entered to win. And then next week, right here on the show, we will announce that winner of this of this computer. Oh, Bo got Bo quiet. So quiet. I don't know. He's dead he's quiet. Like miles away. Yeah, you got real quiet. Are you quiet. Uh, bumping a cord or something? That's, yeah. Uh, Sounds like cord sound bump. Like oh. I can hear it now. Oh, yeah, I hear it. it must be a cord. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I, I got a cord, a better cord, but I think it's actually a worse cord. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think, <laughs> like, my, I think my better I cord. I swapped is worse. out for a better cord, and I'm like, my old crappy cord works way better than this new cord. Apparently. Totally fine. Um, you sound um, fine now, but yeah. I, my question was just, it's on X. Is there anywhere else? Yeah, Facebook and X, either one. Facebook so, or X. Yeah, and they're both so, they're both doghouse systems, same exact username. Since this involves compliments of our show, even if you don't need the computer, can you go ahead and write compliments? <laughs> you can if you want. I think it'll enter yeah. them though, either way. And maybe if they say they don't want it, they can do that if they already yeah, have. Yeah, say I don't want it, but I just like drop by and say, I really like core. There's a yeah. swell show and I listen. I love seeing that. I, I, I need it after the week I've had. Or you can give your entry to me. Yeah. So feel free to tag me and yeah. say, John uh, will always take free stuff. And he <laughs> said that if I win, he can have it. Yeah. I don't think we can give 
our listener prize to the host. That's like <laughs> no, corruption. Isn't no, it? <laughs> it's not me giving giving the listener prize to the host. It's the listener giving their prize to me. Yeah. I, it made it's sense fine. what you said to me, sure. Yeah. Um, I still think it sounds skeevy, but I get what you're saying. I see where you're coming That's, from. I mean, I'm not telling them to do this. They should enter for themselves. <laughs> Let me be clear. Yeah. You should enter for yourself. But if sure. you're not going to enter for yourself, you can enter for me. Yeah, and if you can enter for you, then who are we? What, uh, never mind. I, I was going to make probably shouldn't because someone will get mad. I just realized I ain't giving anybody any specs. Let me tell you what you're getting here. 15.6 inch QHD 2560 by 1400 display. Very nice display. Whoa. All right. Never mind. I'm back in. You can. Matt, <laughs> a matte display, 165 hertz, G Sync uh, built into it, 100% DCI P3 coverage, wide view angle, Intel Core i7, uh, 12. Which one model is that? The 12700HX processor. It's a 12th gen. Is Oh, that's 12th yeah, gen. It's 12th okay. Gen. Yeah. 14 cores, 20 threads. It's a beast. Uh, 32 uh, gigs of memory, uh, DDR4, that is. Let's see. A terabyte NVMe, the fast drives. Uh, let's see. Two, let's see. Oh, there's yeah, two drives gen, in this. 12th Gen is sick. That's got the E-cores in it, man. The I, and the i7 is a powerhouse. This is a, this is a good, you get a good CPU on this. They got boy. a terabyte on MV, MVNE and two terabyte SD, SSD, just storage SSD. That's amazing. Uh, this is a GeForce RTX 3070 Ti built in with a eight gigabyte GDR or GDDR6 memory on that thing. It's pretty uh, much my PC, but in laptop form. Yeah, it's this, nice. This is, this is this is a good one. This yeah, is a, this is a good. This is yeah. It's very nice. Dock it at home on your big screen, or take it with you. Whatever I, you do. I understand John wanting to like get this. Yeah, and from this a, from a listener. Chat, I really, really shouldn't good. ask for more stuff from Dockhouse. They were very kind to me. They were. Well, you know, one of the first things I did when I set up my computer at the new house, mm. I opened a box from Doghouse. Yeah, and uh, I. They sent me a new front plate to my computer. Oh my! Because I simply had asked them, "Where could I get a replacement?" Because I didn't know what to search for. Right. right? Like, because how do you say, Amazon? Where do I get the bracket that holds the plastic screw for a computer case? Right. And it's broken. <laughs> so I was just like, "Tell me what this is. I will get it." And they sent it to me. Yeah, because so, they're nice. They're I have amazing. a new front to my PC post move. It's so nice. Yeah. Um, they're amazing. They, they're amazing. They will take good care of you. This Mobius is really nice. They're they'll if you ever do stuff with wow. them, they're your friend Thank forever. You so much. It's like how yeah. did this how did this come about? Thank you so much, dog. They system. came to me and said, "Hey, do you want to do a giveaway?" Sponsor and I show. said, oh "Hell God, yeah, let's crazy. do it." So uh, don't actually enter me in case anybody thinks I'm being serious. Yeah, don't do that. But you can send me a laptop independent <laughs> of this contest. Yeah, that's always an option. Please send John a laptop. <laughs> I will at some take. Point. I will take your laptops. Yep. But don't send, don't enter me in this contest. I hope you get like a Toshiba Pentium. <laughs> oh, no, okay. Hold on. Let me walk you back. <laughs> send me your good laptop. Yeah. Now I will say, an upgrade. I will say this for full disclosure. They'll pick randomly. Um, I want you to say nice things, but I don't want anyone to think that if they don't say it perfectly, they're going to be less eligible. You're eligible regardless, right? So I'm just saying it's a random drawing. It's not like, you know, they're not going to read being evaluated on the no. merit of how, like, no. how much you lather us in praise. Right. But, right. but we'll be reading them. <laughs> 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 so, you know, bear it in mind. <laughs> yeah. Keep that in mind. Um, but, yeah, we're going to give it away next week. That'll be the fourth of the month uh, of April. So uh, next Thursday, our regular show time, sometime during the show, we will give that away. So big thanks to everybody. Again, that's Doghouse Systems on either Twitter and, uh, uh, not and or, just or. That is a sick-ass Facebook. giveaway. Holy shit. I know. It's nice. These guys are awesome. We love them. So go check them it's, out. And uh, yeah. if you're also in the market for anything they do, they're, they're amazing. And they'll take care of you for life. So go check them out. Like somebody's seriously going <laughs> to get a good piece of, like, it's Christmas time for you. Yeah. It's a big whoop, right? Like big time. Like yeah. I was so happy when I got my PC and one of you, one of you listeners who takes the time to write lovely comments about us yeah. is go is going to like have your day made. Holy shit. Yeah. That laptop That's is cool. on par with my main PC. Not I, my main PC is a little better, but it's it's close. Is it? And that's shocking cuz yeah. I spent a lot of money on this computer. Here uh is there, chat. Is there a post they need to reply to or did they just at doghouse? 
Uh, they, I would post, um, I think he's just at Doghouse. They didn't say, uh, and I don't see a post that's, they're going to do a post. I know that. Um, Maybe it'll uh, come out after the show. Yeah, I don't think it has to be on that post. They just really just are looking for that. And I just went and verified. Somebody said it was a dead link. It's not. Doghouse Systems on Twitter. So twitter.com slash doghouse systems or facebook.com slash doghouse systems. Either one gets you there. Uh, That's it for that. Very exciting. Uh, What else? That's going to do it for us. Oh, we should mention some patrons. We got two brand new folks this week. Uh, Steel Ford. I think that's his real name. Because it's yeah, cool. But steal like metal, not like go out and nick a car. No, don't take a car. Well, that's very British, John. That you just did. Well, yeah, I got British family. Sometimes it slips out. I'll bet. You said nick nick a car. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. Uh, Dusty Michael, <laughs> also a very cool <laughs> name. I love that name. No, no complaints. It's an amazing name. Uh, they join these wonderful folks we call patrons at patreon.com slash core show. Uh, you get no commercials ever of any kind over there. Uh, you get pre-show and post-show content every week. And the, this contest is not a commercial. This is just like a straight-up giveaway. Uh, <laughs> you get monthly benefits, including video game art in the mail from me, uh, host specials. There really is one coming out in March before the Who, month ends for me. doing it? It's okay. me. It's and I'm just very late. But don't worry. I got what? How many days? Yeah, you got time. The month's not closed yet. I got it's like three days. Yeah, you got three days. Yeah. Holy three shit! Three days. I'm gonna get make on it, it, man. I, I'm gonna make it. You guys will get like Talk a thirty about minute microtransaction. Oh yeah, people will love more of that from me. I almost <laughs> did before this show, and then I'm like, we're gonna do this on Thursday. Why am I doing that? So I'll come up with something better. Uh, but anyway, it'll uh, that'll be soon. And uh, if you want to be a part of it, go to Patreon.com/slash/CoreShow. Everything else is at FrogPants.com/slash/Core. And we'll get out of here now. But we need Grandma to tell us what the hell we played grandma take it away well you wouldn't know that we were living in modern times with the games they played this week apparently everyone's feeling real nostalgic because because well we'll go backwards to make what i said make sense <laughs> bo played starcraft 2 and he played world of warcraft classic and half-life 2 in virtual reality and sean played baldur's gate 3 and No Man's Sky, which I was told today was eight years old. Think about that. <laughs> Scott yep. played System Shock Remake, Crusader Kings 3, Dying Light 2 Stay Human, and Lightyear Frontier, the only game that is new and current <laughs> on this list. Because you know what they didn't play? Dragon's Dogma 2, but they talked about it for an hour. We sure so did. So if you wondered what game they talked about for an hour, it was that one. You can play it. That's up to you. Yep. You got 70 bucks? Well, good news. You can go play it. Or more if 70. you buy the... It's, like, it's 90 in Canada. Yeah, 90 in Canada, another, uh, you could do like the $100 one here. Still have to do the, well, I assume it comes with some of that crap, but whatever. Do what you got to do, everybody. Play the games you got to play. For now, I'm going to study, I'm going back to school, and I'm going to play Crusader Kings 3 and learn all about uh, uh, British, or sorry, uh, European history in a way that Kamania. I never have before. And I assass- about Kamania. Yeah, and I got, yeah, Kamania, uh, how to kill a bishop who's screwing you over and you didn't know it. All that kind of stuff. It's great. I'm enjoying it. Uh, That'll do it for us. We'll be back next week with more core. Will you be here? Well, that's up to you. Make that decision now and we'll see you then. Get more at frogpants.com. I have no pithy clip to play at the end.